if he said, if he's wrong? No, he's got it right. It is. I just couldn't think of it. Whoever's put on Taylor Swift, I'm over the moon about it. I know everyone's rolling their eyes, but I'm a Swifty. Yeah, I got you. I'm keeping an eye on uh, <laughs> Eris tickets for my third time to the tent.
Good morning. Welcome to day three of the Speedo Aquatics GB Swimming Championships here in London. Uh, we're on day three. Can you believe it? Almost the halfway point. I tell you what, it's been a fantastic few days of racing. And if you missed out on last night, I'm going to take you through it because I tell you what, it was a fantastic one. We kick-started our night with the incredible Amelie Bloxage taking the title in that women's 1500 meter freestyle. What a little superstar she is. She won this last year at the age of 14 on her birthday. This year, a week before her 14th, 10 seconds off her PB and taking the title once again twice at 14. An amazing start to the night. We then moved into the women's 100 meter backstroke in the Paris Para. Uh, Alice Tai back in the pool. She unfortunately had to miss out on uh, the Tokyo Paralympics because she was having a reputation. She said to me she was so excited to be back and back on fine form I must say. Taking that title and looking super strong to start her program. One of my races of the night though. The incredible Ollie Morgan broke Liam Tancock's 15-year British record in that men's 100-meter backstroke. Going under that nomination time and punching his ticket to Paris. We also saw Jonathan Marshall do the time as well, so putting himself in a fantastic position in front of those selectors. It was a great, great, great way uh, for him to start his program. Uh, the women's 100-meter backstroke saw Kathleen Dawson take the title. Not only did she win, she also punched her ticket to Paris, went under that nomination time. The emotion in her face was absolutely palpable. You could see how much it meant to her when she finished that race and, of course, caught up with me for an interview afterwards. It's been a long road for her, but to see her come back and do that, there she is hugging Mehdi. Oh, my God, it was an amazing way to, to finish off our evening. Today is going to be absolutely no different. More excitement and more drama in that pool. So what have you got to look forward to? Let's take a look at our uh, schedule for the heat session. We're kickstarting our day with the men's 1500 meter freestyle. Now these will be the heats, okay? Tonight, that will be swam as a fastest heat. We then move into the women's 400 meter individual medley, the men's 50 meter butterfly, which is a power up multi-class event only. We then have the women's 50 meter freestyle events, the men's 400 meter individual medley, and we're finishing with a fast one, that men's 100 meter freestyle, the blue ribbon event. I can't wait to see it. We've got some big boys in the pool. Uh, but how does it work? How do these athletes qualify their place into tonight's final? Well, let's take a look. The finals format is as follows. Uh, to make it into the Paris final, that will be the top eight from the heats for Great Britain. Only the athletes from that final can make it to Paris. Uh, we then have our B final, which is ranked ninth to 16th from the heats. And of course, our junior final is the next eight fastest juniors, because some of our juniors may swim really fast and make it into uh, those previous finals. We also have the Paris para final, which is the top eight from the heats for Great Britain. That one is ranked on points. Now we're of course merging our events here, the para swimming and the swimming. So if you've never seen a para event, this is how it works. The para events are ranked on classification. So S1 to S10 is physical impairments. S1 with the more severe impairments. S10 uh, with the least. S11 to 13 is visual impairments. S11 being the most severe. Uh, they must wear blackout goggles, of course, these checks before and after the race. And S14 is intellectual, intellectual impairments. So this would be pattern recognition, being able to count stroke record, etc. cetera. Um, and how do the points work? So at this event, all of our S classes, they're gonna compete together. But it wouldn't be fair to, say, put an S3 against an S10. So the top eight for the final are based on the points. The points are based on a percentage of that class's world's best time. Now, in the finals, we're looking at two things. Uh, the points, of course, to take the British title. But each individual class will be looking for their time in their classification to qualify their spot at Paralympics at, uh, at Paris over the summer. So hopefully that made it a little bit clearer for you. Lots to get through, but of course, we've got Andy Jameson and the wonderful Paul Noble over there in commentary taking us through this morning's action. So it's over to them, and I'll see you in a bit. Thank you, John. It's morning three, and we've had some fantastic swims so far. We really have. And to have eight qualifiers for the Olympic Games already by rights with another two who have done the time but come second, so they've done the nomination time, they will be put forward for consideration for selection. I'll be very, very surprised if they don't make it. This is uh, the first of three heats this morning of the men's 1500 metres freestyle with Dante Sinnott of Barnet, fastest seed in lane number four. There are four heats in total of the 1500 metres freestyle. The first three will be this morning, and then the fourth heat will be actually this evening in the finals. 
heat sessions we swim with 10 lanes, all 10 lanes of this fantastic aquatic center built for the Olympic Games here in London in 2012. We use all 10 lanes in the heats, and in the finals, generally, we only use eight lanes, but because the fourth heat of this 1500 meters freestyle will be a heat, it's the final heat, heat declared winner, in the final session this evening, there will be 10 lanes used for the 1500 freestyle, and then eight lanes for all the finals. It's the first of three heats this morning, then, of the 1500 freestyle for men. Take your marks. Well, there were ten entries. One's, uh, one's actually withdrawn. It's uh, Max Tambling of Winchester City Penguins. But I'll just give you the full lineup. 30 lengths of the pool. Just uh, three heats this morning. So James Raw of Leicester Sharks will be in uh, lane zero. And lane one is Jack Bangra of City of Cardiff. Nobody in two. Three is Adam McCauley White of Portsmouth North Sea. Down to Senator Barnett in four, there's teammate Doug Tolkien's in five. Six is Jack Bainford-Rudd of Portsmouth North Sea. Seven, Alfred of Carmel. Eighth, all the main eight is uh, Jennings of Portsmouth North Sea. And Loughran of uh, Geary and the Miley's uh, Old Swimming Club. Uh, Scotland in lane number nine closest to us. But the early leader up there in lane one is uh, Jack Bamber of uh, City of Cardiff. And I've gone out nice and comfortably. Well, I'm delighted to tell you, yesterday we had uh, we had the presence, we graced with the presence of, a wonderful presence it was, of Freya Anderson for the women's 1500 metres freestyle. And delighted to have another superstar on the commentary box this morning. It is Ross Davenport, four-time Olympic finalist, three-time Olympian in 2004, 2008, and uh, here in London 2012. Double Commonwealth Games gold medalist, European silver medalist. The list goes on. The race will be finished by the time I give you <laughs> the full list. Welcome, uh, welcome, Ross. Well, it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure to, to be here. Um, this iconic venue, the last time I swam here was a, was a long, long time ago, back in 2012. But it's, uh, it's great to see the British swimming is, or sorry, Aquatics GB is, is, is doing so well. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, you're saying uh, British swimming to Aquatics GB, it is, uh, it is that that very change of brand that um, is everywhere. You can see it all over the pool, all over the boards, all over the billboards. It's, uh, they've done a super job of producing this new Aquatics GB branding. First over at that uh, 200 metres turn is Jack Bamber. Up there in lane number one. Lane zero at the top, the blue hat of the city of Cardiff swimmer in lane number one. And just starting to make a move now, maybe in lane three, Adam McCauley Wright. Of Portsmouth North Sea, two, three Portsmouth North Sea swimmers in this uh, in this heat in lanes three, six, and eight. They're just maybe starting to take over. So Ross Davenport, three times Olympian, four times Olympic finalist. Where, did he do 1500 in any of those? I'm trying to find a 1500 meter swimmer. I did uh, talk yesterday to Freya Anderson and said, "How about it?" She she turned a rather nasty pale of a shade of, uh, of grey. <laughs> she said. Actually, she'd done one before. I was like, no way. Really? In training. Does that count? <laughs> Absolutely no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure every swimmer's done a 1500 at some point in, in training. I, um, I did one broken. Does that count? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a tough gig for these guys this morning. You know, it's, uh, it's day three. It's morning three. Uh, it's, what is it? Four minutes past ten. And they've got to come in here and swim a 1500. And... You know, like we've been seeing all week, people are coming in and, and they're delivering lifetime bests and, and they're moving up the, the rankings and getting themselves into positions where hopefully for, for selection, whether it's uh, you know European juniors or whether it's, it's, it's junior teams or whether it's going on to, to represent Great Britain at the Olympic Games. So a real tough gig for this morning. Um, and, you know, really excited to see how these swimmers, not only at this event, but go on from here and, and, and kickstart hopefully a, a long career for, for a lot of these swimmers. And you were talking about, uh, you know, it's 10.04 now, 10.05, even it's going to be sort of fifth, quarter past 10 by the time this first heat finishes. For many of these guys, this is it. This is their big event of the year. It is the Olympic trial, 1,500 metres freestyle. And there used to be this concept of oh, it's a morning swim. I didn't, I, I swam really well, but it, it was a morning swim. So considering the fact it was morning, it was good. You can't do that anymore on world, the world stage, can you? You've got to get, you've got to get to, up to deliver your best self 
at the time that you have to swim. You obviously did it many, many times, making four Olympic finals. How did you make sure that that morning swim wasn't a morning swim, so to speak, and you actually could do your best in the morning? How did, how did you manage that? What it, tactics did you use? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it depends on well, what level you, you're swimming at. Um, you know, certainly for me, in my, my event was 200 metres freestyle, so it's, it's a lot shorter than, than this event that we're watching right now. Um, but if it, if it was a, a trials, at a, you know, at a, a British Championships, then I was able to to kind of go through the motions through the heats and, and the semi-final, uh, and then and then really hit out on, on the final. They don't have semi-finals at the minute, so it's, it makes it a little bit tougher to to make that final. Um, but what what you've seen over the, the the shift over the last 10 years, um, if not 15 years, is the depth in in Aquatics GB, and you look in at you can't coast the heats unless you're a, a superstar. But you can't coast the heats in a domestic event, which actually helps when you get to the international event that you 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 practice going out hard in the heats and, and making it through the rounds. So when you get to a final, you're in the best place to 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 then get onto the podium. And you, you've actually seen what's really interesting in watching Adam uh, Peaty over the last 10 years is. He came in here with a mindset that every single race is going to give his best version of himself. So whether it was the, the heats or the semi-final or the final, he, he absolutely went for it. And he practiced, and he was probably a little bit ahead of his time in terms of where he thought he could go to, but he practiced delivering world-class time in the morning, because that's what you need to do when you make a, a junior competition or whether, whether you go on to represent um, you know, Great Britain. Then at the semi-final and then in the final, producing the best of the, the three rounds that you've gone through so these guys this morning yes it is a morning swim but it's probably going to be the only chance that they're they're going to swim well it is going to be the only chance they they swim this 1500 for a, for a good couple of months so it, it's about giving your best version you, of yourself putting yourself out there because if you do a pv you will move up the rankings um and, and opportunities and doors will open for you so Obviously, they've got to swim quick as they can. We've talked about that. But did you, I mean, if you were going to swim Olympics heats, for example, uh, and I don't know what time your heats were when you were swimming any of your three Olympic games, but let's say you were going to swim at 10.30 uh, or something in the morning. How did you make sure that you were absolutely on it at 10.30 so you could deliver your quickest self? Because most swimmers would prefer to swim at night and, you know, really give it absolutely everything and do the best time, etc., etc. But in order to get to the Olympic final, you have to really deliver your best self in that morning. So what did you do to make sure that you could absolutely hammer it and do your lifetime best in the morning? I think you, you, it's all in the preparation. You know, you have to... You know, a lot of people do their, their main sets in the evening. We actually shifted it and we did a lot of our main sets in the morning. So you get you used in training. So you get you used to waking up at six o'clock in the morning and, and getting to the pool. I was, look, I was very privileged and very fortunate that it was in a, a performance centre, and we didn't actually start swimming until half past seven in the morning. Some of these guys are finished by that time. You know, they're they're they're, they're in the pool for five o'clock and they're at home by half past seven. So it's changing that you know that mindset that you you can swim fast in the morning and whether you have to change your, your body clock and you have to get up a little bit early and you have to take some caffeine on, but that's what you need to do to make sure you swim well in the morning. Well, I'll just give you a quick update on the race here. It's, uh, that's the halfway mark in this first heat of the men's 1500 meters freestyle. The leader turning an 807.5 is Adam McCauley Wright of Portsmouth North Sea. 807 at the halfway. Well, if, he, uh, if he can even split, he'll be going about uh, 16.15 or so and his entry time is 16.29 so he's on for a pretty good uh, swim this morning I mean it probably drop off a little bit but uh, he looks pretty comfortable at the moment it looks like he's increasing his pace a little bit 32.79 so pretty, pretty much 32.8 for that last 50 we'll keep an eye out on those splits for you but he looks very good at the moment yeah he actually just went a little bit quicker on that that 50 50 before was, was around about 33 uh, point four, so he's, he's starting to, to, to wind up, um, obviously got over that halfway mark. And a lot of you'll see a lot of the, the 1500 swimmers will either back end it or have different tactics. Uh, I remember Dave Davis doing his first ever 1500 at the Commonwealth Games in Manchester in 2002. Didn't have any concept of, of, of tactics, 
and his coach just said to him, just build each 500. So his last 500 was actually quicker than his first 500. Some swimmers will go half and half. Some people will just, just go out from, from the off. So it's different tactics will, will come into it, but a lot of these swimmers will, will find a groove, will find a rhythm and start churning out and to be 33.32 high. I mean, it'd be interesting to see now his last, as he was going from left to right, uh, from right to left, he went 32.7, now he's just gone 33.1. So all, all these 50s are within half a second of the previous one. Well, he is very consistent, isn't he? He's just starting to look a little bit tired. And then up the top there, maybe starting to just uh, come back at him a little bit. Right at the very top is uh, James Raw of Leicester Sharks. And interesting that uh, lanes zero and three leading this field. It is spearheaded, seeded with the fastest guys in the centre, but that's uh, again a 32.9, so he's right within that time 32.7, 8, 9. Very good uh, swimming from him. It's Adam McCauley Wright of Portsmouth North Sea. And he's coming in now to the 1100 metre turn. 400 metres to go in this first heat of the men's 1500 metres freestyle. Adam McCauley Wright leading of uh, Portsmouth North Sea. Right at the top there, just coming into that shot in lane zero. It's uh, James Roar of Leicester Sharks. Then in one, Jack Bambra of City of Cardiff. Up here in lane six. Jack Booth Rudd of Portsmouth is in about fourth place. Close behind the lane eight, uh, lane eight is Thomas Jennings of Portsmouth North Sea. So another 33.1. So he's right there. He seems to be going slightly slower going into the finish end and slightly faster going this way towards the turn end. Yeah, it happens quite a lot actually. More than you, more than you probably realise. Um, but what, what amazes me with, with 1500 swimmers or 800 swimmers is that how consistent they are every single 50. We're talking about, you know, we're in, we're within 0.4 of a second every single 50. They'll be doing the same amount of distance off the wall. The, the stroke rate will be the same rate. The stroke count will be the same stroke count through each 50. Yes, okay, they, they might turn it up over the last 200 meters to get a bit of a sprint on, but it's very consistent, all within 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a second. And in, in terms of, in, in terms of uh, Dante, it's, it's, it's 30, 33, 32, every single... Oh, sorry, Adam, it's, it's very consistent, another 32, 8. So it's, it's very consistent within 0.4 of a second on each 50. Well, that's interesting. He, he was starting to look tired a couple of hundred metres ago, but kicked really well off the wall on that... Uh on that uh, turn back there, I think that was, was that the 1300 metres uh, turn? No, the, the 1100 metres turn, was it? Yeah, 1100 metres, so they've got 400 metres to, to go, so... Yeah. I used to think 400 used, used to be a long, long way, and now, you know, they'll be, uh, they'll be so pleased to, to get to that 400 metre mark now, the eight lengths, and I'll just turn, obviously, got seven more lengths, but another 32.9, so so consistent, which is, which is great. Not gone out too fast over the first four, 500, but just settle down into a rhythm, churning length after length out, and then you'll start to see, probably with 200 metres to go, that will stop. The 32 high will probably become 32 low, and then down the last 100, it'll be whatever's left in the tank. Well, I did think he was getting a little bit uh, tired, but he still looks good. Let's see if he's somewhere around 33 flat, 32.8 again. So he's, uh, he's picking it up again. Is Adam McCauley right in lane number three. Still going with him is uh, James Raw up in lane zero. That dark hat right at the top there of uh, Leicester Sharks. And these two guys probably about uh, 10 metres ahead just at the bottom of that shot. You can see in lane number six is Jack Booth Rudd. Jack Booth Rudd uh, just overtaken Jack Bamber of uh, Cardiff in lane one. So over first at the 1,250 metre turn. Five lengths to go in this first heat of the men's 1,500 metres freestyle. Adam McCauley right at Portsmouth North Sea leading from James Wall right at the top there. And it's been 32-7, 32-8, 32-9, 32-8, 32-7. It's been very, very consistent and a good swim. His lifetime best, 16-29. And one of the great things that we have seen at this competition so far, Ross, is that there have been a huge number of lifetime bests 
all across the swims. Interestingly, except the women's 1500, where only 26% of the women did lifetime best, which, which I was quite surprised about because all the other events seem to be pumping them out so many lifetime bests, but on that particular one, a little bit less so. Yes, yeah, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, I say it's a new event. Um, it's certainly in the, the international stage, it's a new event for the women. So there might be a case that it's just a, a bit of a learning curve and a lot of these swimmers would have had to qualify. So probably produce their best performance to, to get to this stage. And then now it's, you know, it would have been in the morning again. And it's just a lot of, a lot of learning to, to cope with this. Whereas these boys will have been doing this event at nationals or age group nationals uh, for many, many years. Uh, just see now Adam starting to, to drop from the 32.9, 32.8 to 32.6. So just starting to wind up a little bit. Um, but actually, it's uh, Jack Booth Rudder, the fastest 50 so far. It's really coming back in lane number six. Uh, and probably left it a little bit too late to challenge as we come into the bell with two lengths to go. So that's the 1400 metres turn in this first heat of the men's 1500 metres freestyle. Uh, Adam McCauley rides of Portsmouth North Sea. Seven, uh, 16 years of age he is, and he's swum really well so far. He's been pumping out those 32.7s, 32.8s, and he's going to go a huge lifetime best, I think, here. 16.29 is his lifetime best. He was uh, 8 minutes and 7 seconds at the halfway mark. So if he was to double that, that'd be something like uh, 16.15. I reckon he can go somewhere around 16.20, maybe. Something like that. Even, possibly even faster than yeah, that. That'd be quite uh, special. Yeah, I think he's going to go under 16, 15 here. He's just gone a 30, 31. So if he comes back in the 31, it'll be 16, 17. So yeah, I think he, you know he's gone to his legs. He's really brought the stroke rate up. So Adam McCordy Rice is going to win the first heat of the men's 1500 meters freestyle. A really good swim. Lifetime best was 16.29.7. He's just gone 16.16. 16. 13 second lifetime best. Wow, on 1500 meters freestyle, 13 seconds lifetime best. Almost one second per hundred faster than he's ever gone before. Brilliant swim from him. Second, James Raw of Leicester Sharks. Well, that's a huge, uh, a huge PB from him as well. His, uh, well, his entry time, 16.35. Actually, it's a tenth of a second inside his, his PB. Wow, third. In lane six was uh, the very fast finishing Jack Booth Rudd. And 16.24. So again, right on his lifetime best. So uh, Jack Bamborough in fourth. And fifth was uh, Thomas Jennings. But he swam really well. He paced it really well. As you said, Ross, just really nice and comfortable. Looked a little bit tired somewhere around that 1,000 metre mark, but uh, really brought it home and almost had a, a new lease of life at the 1,000 metre mark. Yeah, he's, he's certainly paced that very well. He's saying going through 8.07 at the halfway mark. And then around about 8.09 for the second half of the race. So very even split. And he finished on a 29.9. So saw that he picked a straight rate up, brought his legs into the last 50 and had a smashing swim. There's confirmation of the result of the first heat of the 1500 freestyle. 16.16 wins it, 13 second lifetime best for Adam McCauley right, James Raw second, Jack Booth Rudd third. It's very good swimming in that first heat of three heats of the 1500 this morning. And Ross Davenport joining me for these uh, 1500 metres freestyle heats, three times Olympian. Commonwealth Games gold medalist, 200 free and 4 by 2 free relay. Those are fun events, aren't they? The relays at the Commonwealth Games, they're absolutely great fun. Take Heat two. So the fastest seed is Samuel Lander of Mount Kelly, right in the centre in lane number four. He's a junior, 17 years of age. The full lineup, though, the Burl of Beckenham in zero, right at the top there. Which I think, yeah, he is, yeah, there he is, the Burl. Belt in one of Plymouth Leander, and then Tunbridge Wells in two, Williams of Wickham in three, and four it's Land of Mount Kelly, Joseph Moment of Kingston upon Hull in five, and six it's Daniel Cox of Birmingham, Joseph Kingsland of Nova Centurion in seven, from Drysdale of the Royal Wolverhampton School in eight, and Matthew Warburton of Warrington Warriors, closest to us in lane nine, 
actually get a red hand just below that, uh, that shot. But going out well, going out comfortably. And lane number two, it's three from the top. There's a lane zero right at the top. And uh, that's LeBeau in zero. One is Thomas Belt of Plymouth Leander. In two, it's Hayden Annan of Royal Tunbridge Wells, a 17-year-old. And uh, I was having a little chat with some of the coaches uh, earlier, and uh, they really, really like the look of this uh, this lanyard, this, this young lad. I want to watch Hayden Annan of Tunbridge Wells. Nice, comfortable stroke, breathing uh, to his left, that blue hat at the top there. Would you say typical uh, 1,500 metres freestyle stroke? Not, I don't know, what do, you, what do you reckon, Ross? Yeah, it was, it's interesting, actually. Um, I was listening to a podcast um, a few weeks ago, and they were talking about technique and about how you, you, you're you looking for the perfect technique. And actually, when swimmers or, or athletes are, are doing technique work, you should perfect your own technique and not try and replicate somebody else or somebody else's style and, and again without you know always to revert, referring back to Adam Peaty you would never teach that restaurant of what he does but actually now you see a lot of people trying to emulate what he does and trying to swim like Adam you know you, you look at some of these swimmers here you know you've got so many different styles and your style is unique to you as an athlete and as a swimmer and it's about becoming the most efficient version of yourself. Um, obviously, you did, you did butterfly. You know, that's like the most inefficient you know, way of getting through the water. You, your head's up, you, and it's about it's how... A, it's a thing of beauty, though, isn't it? Let's well, face it. If you can do it, <laughs> if you can do it, and you can do it as well as you could do it. Um, I always found 50 fly okay, but then, you know, having to turn and come back the other way was a, lot, was a different story. But, you know, it's, it is about perfecting your own skills your own technique and becoming efficient making sure that you train the different energy systems so that in this event that you, you can you know maintain that pace all the way through for the whole 1500 meters and not dying off and not having too much in the back end to, to you know come back but it's uh yeah you know you see different styles you see different uh, techniques all across the 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 spectrum of the the events and it's about homing down and working on your skills. What I would say is starts and turns are so important. You know, a lot of a lot of people, certainly in the 1500, don't really focus too much on starts, but you see on an international level, it will come down to 0.1, 0.2 of a second who wins gold or silver or bronze to fourth or, or fourth to ninth, um, oh, sorry, eighth to ninth. And if you can, if you can have the best start in the world, you give yourself an advantage. If you have the best turns in the world, you give yourself a massive advantage. And if you can, if you can bring all that together, and especially on a 1500 when you've got so many turns, you can, if you're point one faster than the person next to you on your turns, ultimately you're going to be a lot quicker. Well, 29 turns on a uh, on a 1500 meters freestyle, point one on each one. That's 2.9 seconds. And if you think about, if you clap your hands as fast as you can, that's about one tenth of a second. So you just go clap clap as, as quick as you can. That's about a tenth of a second. And if you can just do that much better, Ross, I mean, I think your point is absolutely right. Just that much quicker on every turn. It's hardly anything. A tiny, tiny margin, but that much gives you almost three seconds on a 1500 freestyle. It's extraordinary, isn't it, if you think about it like that? And that is a massive chunk, three seconds. Well, you've just looked at the heat before, and some people are doing three, four second PBs, and, you know, it's, it's an amazing swim. But it's about being disciplined. It's about being disciplined every single day in training. The amount of turns, the amount of push-offs, the amount of streamlines that you would do in a session, whether you're doing five, six, seven K a session, whether it's short course or long course, you've got so many different push-offs to practice the small things that actually make the big difference. Yes, okay, you can do a, a fast 100 or, or, or 20 100s, the best eff effort, and you could be amazing at it. But if you can be more efficient, you will be a better racer for it. We certainly will. And we'll, we'll, we'll just give you a quick update here, just down the bottom in lane eight, Finn Drysdale's taken over the lead from Royal Wolverhampton School. That's the 500 metres turn there, 5.19.97. He's going well. So he's averaging just about 64 seconds 100. So that would be, if he kept up that pace, it would be right on 16 minutes. His entry time is 16.27. I expect him to go a little over 16, but he looks very good at the moment. 
almost a catch-up style stroke. We'll just go to that in a second. But in eight, it's Drysdale. In four and five in the centre there, it's Samuel Lander of Mount Kelly and Joseph Moments of Kingston upon Hull. And then up there in two, still going well as Hayden Ennen of Royal Tunbridge Wells Monson with Tim the Burl of Beckenham right at the top there. So here's Drysdale. It is almost a catch-up stroke. Yeah, he does look really smooth and doing two fly kicks off every single wall as well. And, and, and you know, we just mentioned about the, the turns. But if you can go five metres off each wall, you've only got to swim 45 metres. You know, it's about breaking down every length. It's about breaking down every hundred, then into into 500. And it's about, I'm going to say it a lot this morning, it's about being efficient. The, the most efficient swimmer will tend, to, tend to, to win. You know, if you've got the power and the speed and the fitness behind it, you know, you very rarely do you see a world-class swimmer that is inefficient through the water. So it's all about reducing the amount of time you have to physically swim on top of the water because every stroke is taking effort, it's taking energy and it will deplete all your glycogen stores towards the end of the race. Well, this is turning into quite a race, this one, isn't it? Uh, friend Drysdale got in the shot there in that blue hat. And he's just maybe starting to get caught up again. He put a little spurt in about 600 metres. And maybe got about half a metre lead from Joseph Moment up there in lane number five in the centre. Closest to us are those chasing guys in the centre. Moment in five. Lander in four of Mount Kelly right next to him. Over first is Drysdale. He's splitting 33-0. He's been going... 32-9, 33-0, 32-9, very consistent again. 33-1 from Joseph Moment in the centre, and uh, right next to him, Sam Lander, 33-2. So it's very, very tight also up there. Still going well is Hayden Annan. Started off quite quickly, then eased off a little bit in that early phase of 3-500, but seems to be picking it up, that dark hat, towards the top there but still leading just, I think, is Finn Drysdale closer to us, is it? Yes, it is. 33-0, uh, another 33-2 for the centre guys. Yeah, you pretty much got four guys within, pretty much within a second of each other, slightly quicker than the heat before, around about two seconds quicker. 8.07 was the previous heat going through the halfway, 8.05, 8.06 for these four guys. And I always think with the 1500, it's such a long way. It must be nice. And I say it must be nice because I've never done it and certainly never done it long course. But it must be nice to have a little bit of company to just to get that a little bit extra out of you, just somebody to race, just somebody to keep you on your toes. But this is, this is pretty close between all four guys. A little bit slower on that one, 33-3, the guys in the centre just going a tiny bit quicker, 33-0, so maybe just starting to catch up a little bit, but uh, Drysdale looks good here. He does look very good indeed. So Drysdale in lane eight. He's over first, second, still in the centre is uh, Moment in five. Annan up there in lane two, just taken over from Samuel Lander of Mount Kelly in four. That white hat just in fourth place is the Mount Kelly students based down in Tavistock in Devon they're having a very good meet the Mount Kelly team certainly the women in the 100 metres backstroke gracious me Blythe Kinsman 60 point Willie Widow 62 two huge lifetime busts they were brilliant swimming that was still this lovely semi catch up stroke right at the bottom here let's see his underwater nice push off one two butterfly kicks and then and then breathe straight off the wall well that's an interesting one but uh, it's interesting also to see, not only does he push off, but then he just waits. He glides in a very good aqua-dynamic position, nice tight uh, underwater, and allows the momentum off the wall just to continue before he starts that butterfly kick. I think one of the best proponents I've ever seen on that is Caleb Dressel in the US, and watching him is just phenomenal doing that. Yeah, it is. And, and the thing is, as soon as you do a fly kick, you, you become... You certainly put the, the handbrakes on a little bit, when you when you look at the actual hydrodynamics so when you push off you're going to be in the fastest part of your race as soon as you start to slow down or you feel, feel yourself slowing down then you bring the fly kicks in to propel yourself forward even more 
So it's, it's, it's interesting, a lot of people do the fly kick straight away, and that's the, the most inefficient way of doing it. But you want to, just as the moment you start to feel yourself reducing in, in velocity, then you bring the fly kicks in, and then you, you're on your way. Well, 32 7, he's, uh, he's back on it, and another couple of good fly kicks off that wall from the leader. It's, it's interesting, like you were saying before, it's, it seems to be 32, 32 points um, as, we, as we're looking at the commentary box from right to left, and then it's 33 from left to right. And I do wonder whether it's because he's looking, he's actually a little bit slow when he's looking at the other swimmers, whereas when he's actually looking towards the, the lane number nine, he's actually got nothing to gauge it on, so he's actually going a little bit quicker. So sometimes having a race can actually take you into you know somebody else's race plan um having said that it's just gone 32 8 so what, what on earth do i know <laughs> no i think your point's right because quite a few swimmers are going faster one way than the other in the old days they used to have those blowers didn't they the uh you know those sort of blasters which uh, pump the water around the pool to make sure the filtration system works and they'd have it in lane eight at one end blasting and then lane one at the other so the water would sort of circulate around the big pool and in some pools it was actually really quite strong so you'd be lightning fast down 150 and then you couldn't move going back and just couldn't work it out and then one day they put a whole load of those bath ducks you know those little yellow bath ducks in the pool and they were just whipping up the pool one way and then whipping back down the other way it was hilarious so they turned the blowers off and guess what happened everybody went even splits <laughs> oh it's amazing it's when you get overtaken by the plaster that you need to worry <laughs> at the bottom of the pool. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> well, the hairball. Oh, no. No, no, no. That's why you need your filtration system. Well, this is getting tight now. This is getting very interesting. There was seven one hundredths of a second split the first two on the last turn. A little bit more here, but it is uh, Finn Drysdale's now being challenged. Drysdale in eight. Second is uh, Hayden Annan right at the top there. He's starting to really push it again, and the, the time is getting a little bit quicker. 32-7. 32-6, and there's not that far to go now. This is going to be very interesting. Is it going to start hotting up? There were some very quick last 50s in the last uh, in the first heat. Let's see what these guys do. 32-7, so they're back on track again. 32-8 there from Hayden Anand. So at the top, Hayden Anand has picked up the pace a little bit. And 0.4 of a second splitting the first two with Moment third, Lander fourth, Kingsland fifth, Warburton sixth, Williams seventh. And five lengths to go at this turn. So, Ross, it's coming to the sharp end here in this second heat, the men's 1500 metres freestyle. Still leading at the bottom is Finn Drysdale, and he's looked good so far. But Anand, he's been there all the time, hasn't he, up there in two? Yeah, he's, he's paced it really well. 17 year old from Tunbridge Wells. And then that's the, the unique thing about heats when, when you get into to senior competitions that you, you're racing people in different age categories. Um, and, you know, you've got, you've got the age range here of 16 all the way up to, what's it, up, to, to up to 22. So big, big, big age gap, but he's, he's paced it really well. He's been there or thereabouts for, for most of the most of the event now with well, 300 meters to go. Now going into 200 meters to go, he's just started to edge into the lead. He's dropping it down from the 32, 30, from the 33 to 32s. Final 200 meters, you'll probably see it drop down again. But yeah, he's swimming really well. You look at his entry time and his PB of 16.21. He's going to smash that. Well, he really is going to smash it. If he can, if he can pick the pace up a little bit, he's going to go under 16.20. And right at the top it is the leader, Hayden Annan of Royal Tunbridge Wells. He turns first, and they're now putting uh, putting in a bit of a spurt in the centre. It's a Joseph moment with three lengths to go. As he left it a little bit late, he looks very good indeed. The uh, Kingston upon Hulls from in that white hat there. He's really starting to move and move well. We'll see what his split is here, but I wouldn't be too surprised if he's got the fastest 50 of these guys with two lengths to go. The bell is about to go. The bell to donate just 100 metres left in this second heat. Only three heats this morning of the 1500 freestyle. And 32-1, by far the fastest split right in the centre there, and that white hat, so is he catching up? He certainly is having a go. Hayden Anand at the top there, trying to respond, breathing away from the other two swimmers. 
Hayden Annan's going really quick now at the top. Look at this. Yeah, he is, and his hat's just come off as well. So he's gone all that way with his hat hanging on. He's just finally come off, off with, with two lengths to go. But it's amazing swim. You can see now he's just starting to, to break away from the rest of the swimmers. The final 50 metres dropped it down to 30.8. Well, we saw a 29.9 for the last 50. His hat has come off, look at that. That's hilarious. Actually, watch the open water in Rio. The water was very warm there. The swimmers had to, ha had to start with a hat. So some of them just perched it on top of the head. And as soon as they got in the water, of course, it fell off, and uh, that made it much cooler than having a rubber hat on for two hours. But this is a great swim, look at this. Hayden Annan right at the top there. I think he's going to get the touch just from Joseph Moment of Kingston upon Hull. And Finn Drysdale swam really well all the way through that uh, 1500 metres, led for such a long way. He's come third, but he's gone 16 16, a 10 second lifetime best from him. And some great swimming there. 16 14 wins it for Hayden, uh, Hayden Annan. Second, Joseph Moment of Kingston upon Hull. 16 15 from him. And then Finn Drysdale, a huge lifetime best, 16-16. So slightly faster than that first heat. Uh, good to see the three guys pacing themselves and racing each other really all the way through. I think it's really cat and mouse all the way through that, Thank isn't it? Thank you, Please leave the It was a great race, and Hayden Allen paced it perfectly. Wasn't the early leader for the first 4-500, but paced it well in the middle and came back strong in the end. So confirmation of the results of that second heat of the 1500 freestyle. Annan wins it, 16-14. Moment second, Drysdale third, with Kingsland fourth and uh, Lander fifth. Some really good swims there, very good indeed. So the last of the heats this morning, there are four heats in total. This is heat three, but the fourth heat will be swum in the final session. It's a heat declared winner event, there's no finals, it's just one straight heat declared winner. The fastest seed, Jack Muncy. Just missed uh, on the seeding, qualifying for the big final. Just outside of the, of the time, the, the slowest time of the qualifiers for that, uh, or the seeds for the fastest heat. So Jack Muncy is the fastest seed in this second last heat of the 1500 metres freestyle. The last one we'll see this morning. Shafi of Repton in five, McCann of Loughborough in six. He's having a good meet. Stand down, please, swimmers. Just waiting for quiet for the start. Hopefully that's not me. Our commentary position right, uh, right on the pool side, so uh, I'll speak a little bit quieter for the start. Ah, lifeguard radio, apparently. Take your marks. So, the final heat we'll see this morning, it's heat three of four of the 1500 metres freestyle. Fastest seed is uh, Jack Muncy of uh, Sterling right in the centre, but I'll give you the full line-up is uh, Josh Denholm of Newcastle right at the top there in one, uh, in zero. Koresh Kodaka of Leeds, they're having a fabulous meet, Leeds. Uh, he's in lane number one, he won the 400 metres freestyle, I think the junior final. Just missed the European junior consideration time, but he can, he can do it here on this uh, 1500 metres. Samuel Sterry of uh, Jersey Tigers in two, three, it's Cameron Travis of Aberdeen in four, Muncie of Sterling, five is uh, Shafi of Repton, six is McCann, he had a really good uh, 400 metres, a huge lifetime best on that 400 metres freestyle, and then uh, Oliver Rowe of Mount Kelly in seven, Dutoft of Guildford City in eight, and Ethan Kelly of City of Liverpool, my old club, in lane number nine. So, this is the final heat uh, this morning. There's one more one more this evening, and again, joined by three-time Olympian, 2004, 2008, and 2012 Olympic Games, Ross Davenport. Of those three Olympics, uh, Ross, which was your favourite? Which did you enjoy the most? Oh, it's a tough question. Um, and it's a tough question because, in terms of performance, I probably was at my best in Beijing. Um, we came fourth in Athens. Jeez, it was a long time ago, 20, odd, 20 years ago. Nearly 20 years ago, not quite. Um, we came fourth in Athens in the relay, but I, th I think I was at my, my peak in, in Beijing, um, and then a home Olympics was 
was just something that, you know, I can't really put into words how amazing it was to, to walk out in this venue. There's 16,000, 17,000 people. And it was just an incredible atmosphere. And it, did, it didn't matter, you know, walking around outside uh, the venue. People didn't know who you were, but you, you had the GB tracksuit on and people just wanted to, to talk to you, stop and, and see how your performances had gone. And it was just a, an unbelievable time to be a, a British athlete, with, not just for men, just, just in, in general. Um, so in terms of enjoyment, probably, probably London. In terms of performance, it was probably uh, Beijing. But actually, the best position was probably Athens. So it's, it's apologies, but that was a terrible answer because it was all three. That's well, a great answer. To be honest, I've gone to uh, to ten Olympics and I've joined all of them. So. <laughs> but all for different reasons. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, every single one you remember for something special and something specific. Um, but uh, I, I didn't swim in uh, London 2012, but I certainly commentated. And it was a fantastic game to commentate on, but it was actually exhausting because you're in your home country. Everybody wants to chat to you. As you said, you know, everybody's asking you questions and then you can do a little bit uh, for Look North. You can do a little bit for Radio Merseyside. You can do a little bit for you know, Scottish television. I mean, I was doing all sorts of things for all sorts of people. And it was so much fun, but goodness me. I needed my holiday at the end of that one. Just uh, give you a, a quick update on the race, though. Uh, Koros Kodaka of City of Leeds, that yellow hat at the top there, has gone off very fast indeed. He really has. He's, uh, he's looking really good down this first, what, uh, couple of hundred, 300 metres or so. Um, and he's right at the top of the screen, right at the top of the shot there. Long rangey stroke again, Ross. Uh, it, it's a fairly typical male distance freestyle. We saw. Emily Blocksich last night on the female, so at just 14 years of age, so obviously still got some maturing to do in her stroke and the way she swims it, but she's a little bit more of that metronomic tick, 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 where uh, Chris Kodaka here, lovely long rangey distance freestyle yeah. stroke. High elbows, really good catch, two beat leg kick, just looking now how smooth he is through the water. He's opened up a pretty sizable gap over this first 400 meters. Yeah, he's looking really good. It's great to see Leeds swimming well uh, as, as a club. You know, when, certainly when I was coming through as a junior, they were very strong and then kind of went through a little bit of a, the doldrums a little bit. Um, but it's great to see them back, great to see them swimming swimming well. Obviously, when you were swimming, you know, they, were, they, were, they were a powerhouse of, of, of swimming in Britain. Well, powerhouse, there was a Morehouse. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it was outstanding, in fact. But they, you're right, they did have quite a few, didn't they? It, uh, and a couple of breaststrokes on that team. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Gold and silver at the Commonwealth Games for City of Leeds. James Parrock winning the silver and, uh, and Adrian Morehouse winning the gold out there in... Uh, well, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? That was in... Um, in New Zealand, 1990. It's not bad club championships. It's not bad, is it? Can you imagine? Can you imagine being uh, second in the Commonwealth Games and second in your club? God, that's one of the one of the beauties, though, I think, of the, the whole uh, setup of these performance centres because the quality of swimming really is quite special. It really is amazing uh, to have the quality of training group. We have um, Molly Renshaw join us for the commentary uh, in the evenings, and you know, her and Abby Wood teammates just swam together every day but goodness me they're both in the big finals it must be fabulous i tell you what was interesting though ross this is funny so i was talking to her yesterday and i said well what kind do you prefer one do you prefer having your teammate in the ready room going into a major final you know one of your own teammates and two what kind of stuff do you talk about she said oh we just sort of chatted about holidays and makeup and stuff I'm like, what? <laughs> do you, do you, i would never i mean if you and i went to the ready room can you imagine us talking about holidays and makeup <laughs> <laughs> I, do you know what? It's, it's, it's interesting different people's approach and for me it, 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 coming back to your, your, your first point about the the performance centers and you don't have to be in a performance center to, to swim well but what it does give you is that advantage that you are you are going against world-class athletes every single day and if you're having a bad day you are going to get it given to you um on you know you know on the plate and so You have to be on it every single day to to keep up with your your teammates, um, and then you come to a championship and you know exactly how somebody else has been training for the last six months, and it, it can be hard and, and it can be tough because you know what's coming. But on on the flip side, if you're the one that is is turning the screw on your teammates every single day, 
gives you so much confidence to, to come to a, to a meet like this and, and really shine and, and perform. Um, and and that's, you know, that's the difference of, of, of being in, a, in that environment every single day. But it, again, you talk about the core room and you talk about the stresses and you see different approaches to how people are, whether people are, are jumping around, people listen to heavy metal or sitting quietly. For me, I, was, I just sat completely still. I needed to get, I needed to preserve every single ounce of energy I could. I, I wasn't able to, to jump up around and, and, and you know, use lots of um, wasted energy uh, before a race. But you do see these different characters when you go to, to meets and how they approach it. And I wish I could have been more relaxed and, and enjoy it more, but it was such a stressful time. How, how are you? What would you like in, in the ready room? I, well, I had a couple of strategies. On the early phases, I, was, um, I used to jump around a bit, but, and my nerves probably drove that, and I probably used up a little bit more energy than I probably should have done. And then I found this tactic, which was a little bit cheeky, a little bit... Uh, I, I took my headphones in and put, put some music on, and um, Summer of 69 was my, uh, my psych-up song, which I absolutely loved. But then right before everything was just about to kick off and go, I left my headphones on, but turned the music off. So everyone thought I was listening to music, so they wouldn't bother me. So nobody tried to talk to me, because I was like, well, I'm listening to music, so go away. But in actual fact, I didn't have anything on, so I could, I could listen to what's going on, I could see what's going on, I could feel it, smell it, hear it. Uh, and my mantra at the time was be relaxed and aware. So try and be as relaxed as possible and aware of what's going on and just be comfortable in the zone. And that worked for me. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm laughing because uh, cause Molly was saying that her and Abby were talking about holidays and makeup. I mean, if that's what it does it for you, if that's what delivers your best self, that's great. Do it. And if that's not what you and I would talk about, Ross, <laughs> then don't do it. But, uh, you know, it's, it is interesting, isn't it? What delivers your best self? Did you, did you listen to music at no, all? No, I was going to say, you know, you see, you see so many people coming out with these big headphones now, noise cancellating headphones. For me, I had to be aware of what was happening. I had to, I think everything was on a countdown. So, you know, I, I wanted to hear the heat before me go. I wanted to know when they'd finished or, or the final. But so kind of almost anticipate how much longer I had to, to stand on the blocks. I wanted to know when the, you know, if, if I was in lane four, I wanted to know when lane five was being announced. You know, I wanted to, to be, as you said, I wanted to be aware of the surroundings, but tuned into to what I needed to do. I didn't want to be distracted at all. Um, and that's probably why I didn't engage in conversation. I didn't want to, to come away from the, the job in hand of actually, this is, this is really important. This is why I'm here and this, I've got a job to do. And I was fortunate. It was only four lengths for me. You know, these guys are swimming 30 lengths and have to be on it. And a small uh, deficiency in their stroke or on the turns and the, and, or the start can make a massive difference over such a long distance. Well, it certainly does. And talking about uh, beautiful strokes, this guy here, Koresh Kodaka, had a very good 400 metres freestyle early on in the meet. Say so early on, it's only day three, but he swam really well on that 400 free. He's leading in the yellow hat up there in lane one from Leeds, lane zero at the top of course, and then in lane three, just starting to make a move is Cameron Travis of University of Aberdeen Performance, and then four right next to him is Jack Muncy of University of Stirling in the black hat, so Travis in the white hat in the centre there with uh, Muncy in the black hat, but no doubt about the leader, and he's gone off really well so far. This is the thousand metre turn, and Kouris Kadaka first over a thousand down 500 to go and he's going very fast indeed well his entry time at 16.05 uh, none of uh, well he's never gone under 16 minutes of course lifetime best 16.05 he's going to go way under that at, uh, at this pace he's going to go somewhere around six, uh, 15 40 or i think maybe faster 15 40 something maybe maybe Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I'm just trying to work it out now, but yeah, yeah, you know, he's, he's certainly put himself in a, in a great position, and uh, he's looking super smooth. And again, you focus about the turns earlier, two fly kicks coming up around about five, six meters. You can see on the screen now, he's really long stroke, really efficient. He's out there playing at lane number one, all on his own. You know, I was saying earlier, it's, it's sometimes nice to, to swim a, swim with somebody, but. It's, it's no better feeling than swimming in a pool like this and you look left to right and you can see daylight either side of you and he's probably what he's got four meters four and a half meters advantage over the 
lanes number four and three who are really having a, a tough battle for second and third. Well, I reckon he can get under 15.50 uh, here. I think he can go 15.40 something. He's got to keep it going and he, he looks good still. Very high elbow recovery. Still got a good leg kick drive there as well. It's, uh, it's good discipline from Koresh Kodaka of Leeds in lane one. Jack Muncie maybe in the black hat just taking over from Travis Cameron, second into third. Those two guys in the centre, well, uh, Travis Cameron, the white hat maybe. No, he has got the touch there with... Uh, what is that now? Uh, I think that's 350 metres to go, something like that in this final heat this morning of the men's 1500 metres freestyle with the fastest seeded heat in the final session this evening. So Koresh Kadaka leading as he has done right from the gun. Second place at the moment where there's a really good battle between Cameron Travis and Jack Muncie in lanes three and four. Almost uh, dead even with uh, Ethan Kelly of City of Liverpool right at the bottom in the red hat uh, also swimming well. That's uh, in lane nine. He's in fourth position at the moment, and then right in the centre there, maybe that's Sean McCann coming through. But uh, what can Koris Gadarka do? Can he get under 15.50? His best time is 16.05, so if he can go under that, he's going to go at least 15-second lifetime best. He still looks lovely and smooth and strong, and he's still got that lovely little bubbling leg kick as well. Yeah, he has. He's went 32-1. 32-2 and now gone 32-0, so really consistent in that low 32s, and he's actually starting just to just to turn the screw on the on the other guys. It was four and a half meters, then it was five meters. Just seeing what it's going to be with a few lengths of the pool to go. Well, so he's got 200 meters left at this turn, four lengths of the pool in this final heat this morning of the 1500 meters freestyle. Oh, he's just 32-2. Uh, he can still get under, still get under 14.50. He's going to be close. He's got to go 204. Can he go 204 for the last 200? He can, but it's a big ask. Yeah, it's going to be a last big hundred. You know, if he goes 32, 32, and then comes back in a minute, he can do it. But it's, it's interesting that all these barriers that people want to go under. So I want to go, on, and he'll remember the first time he will go under 16 minutes. And hopefully, it's going to be it's going to be here. But. The, the battle for second and third is ebbing and flowing each 50. Well, it is, and it looks like uh, Jack Muncy's just taken over again from the white hat of uh, Cameron Travis. And Muncy's starting to pick it up. He's just split the fastest 50 of any, anybody in the field is Muncy, 32-0-0. The black hat uh, closer to us of those two. That's the battle for second and third in this third heat of the 1500 metres freestyle. Muncie closest to us, Cameron Travis of Aberdeen in the white hat, just been dropped a little bit, but uh, here we go, Koresh Kodaka, well, he's 14.50, so he's got to come back in a 59.6 if he's going to go under 15.50. His lifetime best is 16.05, so I think I'm asking an awful lot here. It's a bit, yeah. a bit unfriendly, isn't it? Yeah. I think he's going to go under his, his lifetime best, which is great to see. It's great you can come in this environment Day three and produce an absolute worldie of a swim. 15 second lifetime best. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna be very close. Let's see where he goes here. 21 is it gonna be something like that? Uh, 21 eight. So he's got to go 28 point. That's that's a massive ask, but uh, it is possible. He's gone but to his legs. He has gone to his legs. He's gone to his arms. He's gone to everything. This is brilliant. Breathing away from everybody else. Doesn't matter where the other guys are. There's a big scrap for second and third still between Jack Muncy and Cameron Travers just on the right-hand side of that shot. Muncy closest to us in the black hat. So Cameron Travers in the white hat from uh, Aberdeen. But no doubt about the winner here. Koresh Kodak of City of Leeds. He's just going to be outside the 15.50. That's a brilliant swim. 15.52.51. That is absolutely outstanding. 13 second lifetime best on 1500 metres freestyle. Almost a second per 100 lifetime best. First time ever under 16, and he's gone 15.52. Seven and a half seconds underneath the 15, uh, the 16-minute barrier. Brilliant swim. He doesn't look that excited, does he? Come on, mate, smile, that is. 13-second PB. That's, that's incredible. Out in lane one, he looked so smooth. 17 years of age as well. well. That is a super swim. Really is fantastic. 
So just waiting for confirmation of the results of that uh, last of this morning's 1500 metres heats. There's one more to go in the final session this evening. Chorus Kadaka wins it of City of Leeds, 1552, 13 second lifetime best. Travis and Muncie both under 16 minutes as well. That's great swimming from them. Sean McCann of Loughborough, another excellent swim from him. New lifetime best coming in fourth. Well, Ross, uh, thank you so much for joining us for those 1500 metres freestyle heats. Uh, some fascinating uh, insights. Three time Olympian, four times Olympic finalist, double gold medalist at the Commonwealth Games, European silver medalist. And uh, some really interesting insights into it how the world of uh, top-level swimming works. Hope you enjoyed it. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I look forward to tuning in for the rest of the week and seeing how Aquatics GB goes from strength to strength. And it's it'd be amazing to see these athletes in the summer, whether it's a junior competition or, or representing Great Britain at the Olympic Games or Paralympic Games. Ross Davenport, thank you so much. Take really enjoyed it. So, first heat of the women's 400 metres individual medley, eight heats, 76 athletes in this women's 400 metres individual medley. And in the final heat, we'll have our new world champion in the women's 400 medley, Fia Corbett. She's already qualified for the Olympic team by winning the women's 200 metres freestyle in a fantastic 156. And so uh, she's already put uh, herself on the plane. On the plane. I think we're going to take Eurostar actually through to Paris. It's funny, isn't it? When every single Olympics, pretty much, you're always uh, flying somewhere, flying to Tokyo, flying to Rio. I guess you didn't fly to London, but uh, some fantastic, uh, fantastic places to go to. And Paris, I've got to say, is going to be a, a superb event. It really is going to be fantastic. So here we go. This is heat one of eight heats of the women's 400 medley. Isabel Hoare of uh, Worcester in lane number two, at right the top there. And then Charlotte Johnson of Swansea three, Charlotte Searle of Birmingham in four, Charlotte Cope of Guildford in five, that's uh, three Charlottes in a row. In six, it's Eve Horton of Wigan. And in seven, it's Sophie Trail of Stockport Metro. And uh, well, from one superstar, Ross Davenport, to another absolute superstar. And this is the women's 400 medley, and I'm delighted that I'm joined by Commonwealth champion on the 400 metres individual medley, Amy Wilmot. Amy, fabulous to have you in the commentary box again. This is uh, this is your event. This is it. This is the 400 medley. This is one I've got to tell you. Can I just before just before we go to you? It's, obviously, it's all about me. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> My <f> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? Because you're the expert. My first ever international, I swam 400 medley. Crazy. You were, yeah, yeah. Were, that's what I thought. <laughs> I saw the light and I never did it again. <laughs> and then I commentated on you winning the 400 medley in Australia at the Commonwealth Games. And I've got to tell you, almost, uh, almost shed a tear for you there. It was fantastic. And your dad never stopped talking since. No, definitely. And I definitely get that from him. Yeah, this was, was my favourite event, my main event. Um, but I just really enjoyed it as well. Kind of a sucker for the hard work. Um, I was a backstroke swimmer when I was when I was really little, sort of um, 10, 9, 10, 11. But moved into the medleys, sort of sorted my butterfly out, got a little bit stronger on the front crawl, and, and the full medley just kind of clicked for me and fit together. And there wasn't many people doing it. I kind of saw the opportunity and thought, well, I enjoy the hard work, why not? And, and I gave it a good go. And yeah, since I was 14, all I swam was full medley pretty much. Did you have an individual stroke? I mean, did you have a, you know, a favourite? I mean, you were good, really good uh, 200 fly swimmer, weren't you? Yeah, when I was really little, I just loved backstroke. I think I actually wasn't the best swimmer, so to be on my back and be able to breathe all the time, I actually found quite a lot of comfort in that. I was terrible at butterfly when I was kind of 9, 10, even 11. Couldn't really get my arms out that well together. My front crawl was really weak because I just wasn't very strong. But yeah, over the years, it, it all changed and then started to improve a lot of my breaststroke and then my freestyle kind of helped me towards the end of that. Fascinating. Well, all four strokes, of course, on the medley, very important to be uh, excellent. But it seems to be this leg, the breaststroke, that always sorts them out. And right in the centre there is uh, Charlotte Cope, one of three Charlottes. We've got Charlotte Johnson in three, Charlotte Sowell in four of Birmingham, Charlotte Cope here in lane, uh, in lane five from Guildford City. 
She's got a good, strong, powerful breaststroke. Nice high, high recovery. Yeah, really long. She's tucking her elbows in really nicely there, and she's made a, a massive difference here just in that 100 meter breaststroke split. So, yeah, you can't afford to be to be too weak in that because it is the slowest part of the medley. So it makes the biggest difference because you can either get left left behind or you can take out a big chunk like we've just seen there from that breast into that front crawl split by Charlotte. So Charlotte is leading. Charlotte Coper, Guildford City. And closer to us is Sophie Trail, who was, uh, was leaning up until the second half of that breaststroke leg from Stockport Metro, closer to us. But uh, no doubt about the leader in this first of eight heats of the women's 400 metres individual medley. Charlotte Cope, coached by Lewis Dunford. And uh, Guildford, 50 metres to go in this first heat. Yeah, Charlotte Cope there, still hanging on. This last 50 really got to find something extra, and usually it's kind of uh, the arms of each starting to hurt. Is it if you've got anything left in the legs? And Sophie Trail here is starting to make a little bit of a move. You can see that the intensity and the increase in stroke rate is, is making a big difference, and looks like it's going to be close now coming into the last 15. Well, this is a fabulous freestyle look, isn't it? Right at the bottom here from Sophie Trail. Very good indeed. Her coach Rick Hall at Stockport Metro. Well, He's delivered a fantastic swim there, 506.3, her best was 509. 509, she's gone 506, 3.3 second lifetime best. And that was a lifetime best as a seeded time as well, so that's a super swim. Wow. Yeah, really good. It, it's sometimes quite hard to be in heat one um, of, of any event, especially to be in one of those outside lanes, because technically you are the slowest person or one of the slowest people in the pool in that event. But Sophie there having a brilliant swim this morning, finishes 5.063, takes 3.3 seconds off her lifetime best, so really well deserved there, the top part Metro swimmer. Top two doing lifetime best as well, so that's a great start in this women's 400 medley. Eight heats just... Uh, just five swimmers, six swimmers in that first heat. Now we've got all ten lanes used. Fabulous facility, this the London Olympic Aquatic Centre in the Stratford. Well, Stratford's changed a massive amount, hasn't it? It really has. I came the other day and I come every year, but goodness me, it's, it's looking wonderful. Yeah, great to see the, the change from 2012. Obviously, this was just a pool and there was an Olympic Park, but now the area is thriving and it's great to see a lot of the, the local community in the venue here watching. Take your marks. Well, there are two 50-metre pools here, this racing pool here, and then just on the left-hand side, just the other side of the barrier, is the uh, foyer, and then the other side of that, there's another 50-metre pool. Well, it's absolutely a wonderful facility, it really is, and uh, it's very well used, as you say, it's a, it's a very good spot, very well used by the locals, and imagine coming and just coming to your local pool and having a swim, and it happens to be the Olympic pool where Michael Phelps won gold, I mean, just amazing. Yeah, I used to train here for a, li a little bit as well after the 2012 Olympics and when the venue started to, to open to the public. And it was really inspiring walking through those doors every day and, and training in this pool. Like, you can't ask for a better environment, really. Well, you certainly can't. And uh, these 10 women in the second heat of the women's 400 medley really benefiting from a wonderful, not only the swimming pool, but the way it's been set up by Aquatics GB here. Set up for fast swimming. They've done everything they can and now it's just let the uh, swimmers go. They've been wound up doing their taper, wound up for the last several months. They just come in here and let it all go. Rebecca Coogan of Romford right at the top there in lane zero. Carabats of Chelsea Westminster in one. Two is Reed of Aberdeen. Three, Lois Child. One of three 14-year-olds in this from Harrogate in three and four. It's Mackie, another 14-year-old from Lanark. Five, it's Annette File of Guildford. Six, Mitchell of Leicester. Price in, of Birmingham in seven. Eight, it's Wheeler of Swansea University. And nine closest to us is Gisela Sallo of Guildford City. Yeah, great here to see on that backstroke leg. For me, I used to really enjoy, obviously, being a backstroke swimmer. The backstroke leg for me was a, a quite a comfortable leg. I used to try and think, I've done the butterfly, now what can I do to kind of not waste energy and hold my position so that I've got a little bit extra to attack towards the edge of the race? I think it makes a massive difference on the breaststroke leg, how well you can conserve, but push on in the backstrokes. It's a little bit of a tricky one, this leg. And Amy, I used to always think, and I have to say, I always used to think when I was doing forward and melee, I wasn't very good at it, and, and so I'm sort of asking your advice here, because 
the way I did think about it, rightly or wrongly, was try and conserve your legs on the backstroke because you need them for the breaststroke. But legs are so important on the backstroke because if you let them drop, then your whole body position changes and it's shocking. So what sort of mental approach? I'm, I'm not saying mine was right at all. In fact, it was probably wrong. But what, what is the right way to do it in terms of do you think about your, saving your arms on one stroke and saving your legs on another or, or do you just get on with it? I think you weren't far off there, to be honest. I think oh. I, I used to swim very similar, so it was very arm-led on the butterfly um, to kind of get through that. Arm-led slightly on the on the backstroke, not necessarily not doing anything with the legs, but keeping that body nice and high, keeping that rhythm from the shoulders and, and being relaxed. And then coming into the breaststroke, obviously a very leg dominated and the front court into the finish using a lot of the legs. So yeah, I kind of used to think front half, arm, second half kind of leg dominated. OK, so you, so, you, so you went backstroke arms, breaststroke legs, but you just forgot about that first one. What, what about the fly? Because a lot of people, that's the one that sort of knocks them out a little bit and psychs them out a little bit, maybe. Yeah, so big legs on the butterfly waste a lot of energy, in my opinion. If I was going really kind of gung-ho on the butterfly, it would just throw me off for the rest of the race. So even though I was a butterfly swimmer, I wouldn't just go in and go like max and, and get to the end and then be exhausted. I'd try and be conservative, but stay in the race. I never finished on the butterfly leg anywhere near the beginning. I was always sort of fifth or sixth in the pool, but used the backstroke and the breaststroke to come through, just like we're seeing here. And here is... Emma Alec file and we were talking about her breaststroke stroke. She sort of breathes slightly to the left hand side, slightly towards us. Had a really good 200 meters breaststroke yesterday. She's an excellent breaststroker, fascinating technique. Oh, really big dive into that wall, but uh, trying to get as much as she can out of every single stroke and turning about what three seconds ahead of uh, of Child, Lois Child in second place. Decent uh, race between Child in three and Mackie in four. The two 14-year-olds there, look at Mackie, the, the white hat of those two chasing. A really good freestyle, really strong. She's quite spidery, but very effective. Yeah, in particular on the on the front crawl, I used to even try and think about this in 250s. There's quite often a lot of time where I thought, I'm on the front crawl, I'm just going to go for it. And then I'd turn and the last 50 would be like horrendous <laughs> in a body bag, basically crawling to the finish. So I used to try and think, Set the, set the tone, get the rhythm, build the speed, and then legs on the second length, not to go too early. Well, that's interesting, and uh, not to go too early. Well, this is really fascinating, because they're catching Emma Adat file here, the Guildford City swimmer. I think they may run out of room. She's just uh, started to pick it up again as uh, Emma Adat file after that great breaststroke split. Very strong indeed. She's got a good freestyle, and Evie Mackey was catching the Lanark swimmer, and he just outside of Glasgow, actually, Lanark, but uh, there we go. First to finish, Ellie Emma Allett file of Guildford City. Second, Evie Mackey of Lanark, and third, Lois Child. Really good swims from them. And a lifetime best of 5.07, and she's gone 5.03. So another, what, three and a half seconds inside of a lifetime best. There we go. That's the, that's the uh, response I've been looking for. Not too many people smile when they do. They're, they're destroying the lifetime best. I'd be going doing cartwheels yeah I think it's difficult at the end of a four medley even when you've swum well to find a smile so really good from her there Emma Allett file finishes first there as I said massive lifetime best Eve Mackey in second and Lois Child there also under her lifetime best in third well, that's two heats down eight heats in this women's 400 medley and it's starting to hot up already there they're seeded on 505 as the fastest but there's a lot of them the whole field between 505 and 507 so on paper only two seconds split the entire field and i'm sure having seen that last heat they're going to be starting to look at uh, trying to break the five minutes and if they start doing that in heat three of eight there's going to be an awful, awful lot of collie wobbles in the in the ready room isn't there yeah that five minute is a really nice barrier to dip under and once you've done it once it feels like such a relief Third heat of eight in the women's 400 metres individual medley. Levy, O'Halloran, Hutchinson of Northumberland and Durham in lane number four. The full lineup though is Beaumont of Millfield one, Hopwood of Guildford two, Dilts, Tiverton three, Noon of Bristol in four, O'Halloran, Hutchinson of Northumberland and Durham. <laughs> She's not in a tight finish with her, her name as long as that and the club as long as that. So, uh, Evie O'Halloran, Hutchinson of Northumberland and Durham in four, I say. Uh, Willow Harrison in five of Sheffield, six is Fisher of Manchester, seven Stacey of Leeds, they're having a cracking night. 
80s brand of rugby and nine ten and ten out again of Northumberland and Durham the second Northumberland and Durham swimmer and she's closest to us in that red hat uh, serene ten and ten she started off very well yeah gone out really strong on this first hundred butterfly you want to try and think about keeping really relaxed on this second 50. A lot of the time as it's getting really tired, the initial kind of reaction is to just breathe every one and just make it to the turn. But if you can go in a little bit faster and hold some of that rhythm and get round that wall there, just want to see that really tight turn to transition into that backstroke, you can kind of save a lot of energy and it can split the field like a lot, even though it's just a small amount of time. Well, we're talking about uh, that turns with um, Ross Davenport on the 1500 and saying it's uh, 29 turns in a long course 1500 metres freestyle. And if you just do one tenth of a second improvement on every single one, which is pretty much as fast as you can clap twice to go, clap clap, that's one tenth. If you do that, just that amount on every single turn, it's 2.9 seconds. It's still an awful lot, really. On, uh, on this, it's seven, seven tenths. But if you do a seven tenth lifetime best, you're absolutely delighted, aren't you? Yeah, you are, especially as you get older as well. You're looking for those really small margins and those things can make a massive difference. And the, the thing I found really interesting in, in medley swimming is there are so many different turns. There are seven different turns and a start and a finish. So you've got almost seven different focuses. You can't just think, I've got front crawl turns and that's all you do in training. You've got the fly turn, which is slightly different to the breaststroke turn, even though they're both touch turns, just because the way you come in and the speed you come into the wall. You've obviously got your transition turn, so you've got your fly to back, and then you've got your back to breast, which is coming up now, which there's so many different ways to do it. And over the years, people have kind of advanced this turn massively. So the classic touch turn is obviously the slowest, where your hand leans back, and then you go on your front. Then you've got the flip turn, which is slightly faster, and then you've got the crossover turn. So there's so many more things to think about in medley swimming, and it makes it really interesting, especially as, a, as, as an athlete training in that event. It certainly does, and this leg, again, the breaststroke leg, is the one that I, I certainly struggle with, and it's the one that really sorts them out. And if you see the top swimmers in the world now, certainly the new world record holder in the men's 400 medley, Leon Marchand, he's absolutely extraordinary. He's got to be fair, he's got four brilliant strokes. His fly is, I think he might be, he's very good indeed. Breaststroke, 206 for 200 breaststroke long course. Just blew away the field in the uh, American College Nationals, the NC2As over there. And then his freestyle, his third fastest American, well, not American, third fastest in history in the NC2As, in the College Nationals in America, which is the hotbed of sprint freestyling. So somebody like that, but his breaststroke is absolutely brilliant. 206 and he's a medal swimmer. Yeah, I, I think a lot of medley swimmers can't really hide in that breaststroke. I did enough 200 breaststrokes to, to give me some of that strength. But Holly Hopwood here has had a brilliant breaststroke split. She's taken a couple of metres out of the rest of the field. Kind of we're seeing the, the race split, which we always do in that breaststroke, um, that breaststroke leg. And using that to her advantage, turns first there, three seconds almost ahead of the rest of the field. And the 16-year-old up there in lane number one, Holly Hopwood, has had a very good swim so far. Let's hope she can bring it home well on this freestyle. She's uh, entered at uh, 5.06.7. That is her lifetime best, and it's also her season's best, so she's on fire this year. And ben Rout of Guildford City doing a super job delivering her right at the top. They're also going well in the centre in lane number five in the red hat. Is that... Uh, it is in lane five, it's uh, Willow Harrison of City of Sheffield. Yeah, the lead swimmer as well, having a really good freestyle split here. I think caught up about four metres, I think it was, on that first 50, so I imagine we'll see her start to come into this stream. But both of these girls now battling it out towards the finish. 25 metres to go is where it really starts to hurt, kind of the lungs are busting. You want to try and get short, but you've really got to think about, can I get my head down from 10 in into the wall and get my hand there first? Well, some real youngsters in this field, and they're doing very well. 15-year-old Willow Harrison, I think, is going to get the touch. She does, 5.05.78, and that's exactly on her lifetime best. That's a good swim from her to come into Olympic trials and swim right on her lifetime best. Second was Holly Hopwood just getting touched out in 5.06.88 to come in second. Right on her lifetime best as well. And third... Down in lane number seven, Evangeline and Stacey of City of Leeds. So confirmation of the result then. Harrison wins it from Hopwood in second, Stacey in third, 
all right on their lifetime best. 5057, 5068, 5070, Zara Beaumont of Millfield in the fourth. So here we go. This is uh, heat four of the women's 400 medley. And Ella Bloxage goes in lane number four from the city of Salford. Actually presented the medals to the women in uh, gold, silver, and bronze in the 1500 meters freestyle because her sister won it. I thought that was just a brilliant move. That's uh, imagine having your sister present you with your national title gold medal. Yeah, it would be would be really special. I think it, it's something nice when you've got a sibling that that is doing it with you. And I had my younger sister kind of there every step of the way Take when I was younger. Box. So. I think to have her present me a, a British Championship medal, or even if she'd imagine if she'd have presented me my Commonwealth medal, I'd have probably lost the plot. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody else did. So, <laughs> to be fair, I was losing it. It was so emotional. That was just brilliant. How much of that, uh, of that Commonwealth gold med medal winning race do you actually remember, Amy? Surprisingly, quite a lot of it. I think because I was so, I was so. Um, I can't even think of the right word, like in the moment, I knew exactly what my race plan was going to be, I knew exactly what I was going to think about kind of on every single length and I wasn't going to let the environment and the race kind of take over. I actually was really methodical in, in how I swam it, so I could probably near enough guess maybe what my stroke counts were and, and it wouldn't be far off. So yeah, especially emotionally and mentally, I, I definitely remember a lot of the race. That's fascinating. And, and then afterwards, I mean, just the, the joy of having your parents there to see you do so well must have been fantastic. Yeah, it makes a massive difference when you've got that that support at home and to have the British Championships here and have your family in the crowd is one thing, but they travelled with me all over the world and supported me year after year, even when I didn't think I was going to go and do very well and they just wanted to be there. So it was really special to have them at, at that moment when you're kind of at your peak and you're just totally enjoying it. Well, Stu, your dad, was my uh, roommate on a couple of trips, actually. <laughs> my ears are still ringing. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I wonder where I get it from, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely chap. Absolutely fabulous chap. Anyway, this is uh, Heat 4 of 8 of Women's 400 Medley. And the early leaders in lane number 3, it is Darcy Crossley of City of Leeds. They are having a cracking meet. I think every time I mention the word Leeds, I say they're having a cracking meet. And it's generally because... The swimmer is leading. Here is Crossley in lane number three, Darcy Crossley. And there's some fabulous youngsters as well. This is another 15-year-old. Jamie Fowler up there doing a super job with them. So it's so Crossley in that yellow hat. Slightly interesting, uh, interesting over the water. Sort of our arms go slightly round the side there. Yeah, slightly kind of, we call it like three o'clock and nine o'clock when you're swimming and you're thinking if you've got a narrow stroke you want to try and widen it it's sometimes for me it's better to be slightly too wide on backstroke than it is to be entering at 12 o'clock because you get a lot of lateral movement and it wastes a massive amount of energy so some swimmers tending to kind of feel like they're swinging out over the top but then they end to bang on at, at the top of the stroke so first over is crossley and then holly waymond of maxwell in lane number two in that blue hat just at the top now, it's, this is where the moves come again, this breaststroke leg, and it's, uh, it's always fascinating to see on, on the women's and the men's 400 medleys. And they're starting to catch now. They really are in lane number three, Darcy Crossley of Leeds still leading, but starting to catch her up a little bit is Holly Waymond of Maxwell, one lane up in that darker hat, and then in lane one, Petra Varga of Wirral Metro. She's swimming well as well. So 50 metres of breaststroke to go and then the 50, uh, then the 100 metres freestyle. And uh, Darcy Crossley, really good first fly and back and slightly less strong on the breaststroke, but I'm, I'm not sure I've ever seen a lead swimmer who's not a good freestyler. Yeah, exactly. And Waymond here is really coming through on this breaststroke split. That first 50 almost setting herself up. And now on this second 50, she's really kind of driving forward she's got a really long breaststroke stroke you kind of see her disappear but she'll just be gliding underwater on every single stroke maximizing that that efficiency and she's had a really good breaststroke split and that's what i love about medley swimming someone could be in the front of, at one point and then miles behind and then come back it's just really exciting well she's had a fantastic split there holly wayman doesn't she of maxwell the blue hat turning first after the uh, breaststroke leg 100 metres freestyle to go, and she's got a good solid freestyle here as well, breathing to her left, so she'll be breathing towards the swimmers as she comes back on the final 50. 
Now, in sprint freestyle, you'd normally say, don't look anywhere. It doesn't matter which side you're breathing, just concentrate on your race. On, on 400 freestyle, do you look across? It's really difficult sometimes because by this point, your lungs are kind of about to explode. I think I used to try and breathe every two, but I started to get really scrappy and, and very messy on the front call and waste a lot of energy. So I then tried to breathe two, four, two, four. I was never very rhythmical at breathing bilateral. So it was kind of pot luck on who was either side. I didn't look, I just kind of stuck to that breathing pattern to get me to the end of the race. And it definitely helped with some of that consistency and, and fatigue towards the last 20 meters of the swim. Well, this is another fantastic swim from a youngster, the 15-year-old Holly Wayman. Her breaststroke was very good indeed, but I'm not altogether sure that the freestyle's not even better. This is fabulous swim. Really is up there in lane number two. Holly Wayman's going to win it. Her lifetime best, 5.01. What's she done? Yeah, oh, she's done 5.01. That's very good indeed. In fact, her best time was 5.01.83. She's just gone 5.01.65, so a new lifetime best to win heat four, the women's 400 medley. A great swim from her. Harris O'Reilly finished very strongly as well in lane number five to get second. A new lifetime best from her, I think, as well in second. We'll check that. Third was uh, Darcy Crossley of Leeds. But uh, no doubt about the, the winner. And that second half, the, the breaststroke freestyle, amazing from uh, Holly Wayman of Maxwell. 501 new lifetime best. Harris O'Reilly second, Crossley third, Cook fourth, and Erin Taylor of Finns in fifth. Yeah, definitely a race of, of two halves there. We, we didn't really see much of her at the beginning part, but the, the breaststroke, especially that last 150 metres of the race, she almost set herself up on the first 50 to get back in the race. And then her race with the other two leading girls came from that last 150 metres. So really strong finish there. Well, that was an amazing back end, that wasn't it? Really was very good. So heat five of eight, two more unseeded heats. And right in the centre, East Lothian swimmer, Zara Kravik, her brother's actually swimming, swam the 200 fly. Right in the centre in four, so heat five of eight of women's 400 medley. Take your marks. Right at the top there we've got Emma Price of Northumberland and Alice Forrest. Teammate in two. Three is Lily Jackson Oates of Nova Centurion. Jody Dilks of Tiverton in four. And East Lothian swimmer Kravik in five. And six is Sophie Brassington of Mount Kelly. She's uh, already done the European Julia qualifying time on the, on the 200 metres breaststroke, so expect her breaststroke to be good in five. Rachel Hornby in six of Swansea. Seven is Lewis Bressler. Louise Bressler of uh, Guildford. Eight is Laura Sharp of Swansea. And nine, Matilda Ransom of City of Cambridge. Yeah, Sharp there having a really good start. We saw her come off that first 15 metres and she was already almost half a, a body length ahead of the rest of the field. And we sometimes forget in distance swimming or in medley swimming that, that, that the start can still have a big impact in the race. If you can get off the block and use that transition down the first 50 to relax into the butterfly instead of having to fight that first 50, it's all about saving energy for me and how you conserve it from one stroke to the next to the next so that you're not fading and you're finishing really strong. And these swimmers here, we're seeing kind of a very split split race. I, I expect that we'll see kind of a fly dominated bit and then some of these girls that maybe just off the screen will come through towards the end of that swim. But yeah, lovely butterflies there. Out 107, 108s across the board. So looking at their times on paper, five minutes, that's probably about right, I would say, to for those times. You're looking to get under that five minute barrier. It'll be can I maybe do the same fly split as I've always done, but can I improve the other bits to help me instead of going out really hard and then trying to hang on, because that doesn't work very often. <laughs> certainly doesn't, uh, but going very well. It's certainly working well for Emma Price from Northumberland and Durham right at the bottom of that shot. And the number of times at this championships that we've seen swimmers from the outside lanes and the heats do really well, it is interesting because they're seeded slowest the fastest is seated in lane four and then five, three, six, two. So from, from the center, spearheading going out to the end, uh, to the outside. And uh, we've actually got the leader still, Emma Price. Interesting right hand, our closest, uh, closest answer. It's a little bit bent as it's going there. That's, uh, that's interesting. 
Yeah, I, I can't really uh, ever comment, I suppose, on backstroke technique. I had a massive bob, and no matter what I did, I couldn't get rid of it. But for me, it was really effective and really powerful. So I sometimes think over the top, it can look a little bit unconventional, but it's all about how much water you're getting hold of and how much water you're propelling so that you can go forwards faster in the other direction. Well, uh, Emma Price having a very good uh, swim here. She's a great uh, freestyler as well. Looks like she's got a pretty decent breaststroke, so if she can keep this up, I wonder if we're going to see our first sub five minute swim. The lifetime best 503.9. 503.9 is, uh, is not bad at all, but I wonder if we can see a four minute something. She's got a decent breaststroke at the top there, and still going very well in lane one as well is uh, Alice Forrest, her teammate from Northumberland and Durham. So the two Northumberland swimmers in zero and one going really well. Yeah, Sophie Brassington there starting to come through on that breaststroke split. Really long technique. She really used that turn to her advantage. She went in second, but she's come off that turn already. And at that 15 meter mark, she's now leading the race. So really big pull out, really powerful, nice and tight around that wall. And just using that momentum down the second 50 of this breaststroke. Well, she has qualified uh, for the European junior team, or I should say she's done a qualifying time. But, uh, will allow her to be considered to be selected for the team. I think they have 30 or 32 juniors uh, allowed to be selected, and there's already 23, I think, that have done the time after two days. So they're going to have a lot of swimmers to choose from. So it doesn't necessarily mean that if you do the consideration time, you will be selected. That's, uh, that's going to be a tough one, but there's been some very fast junior swimming here. It really has. Yeah, she turned there in 350, so personal best on papers, 502. So be close to being in around that five minutes. We've got to come back sort of sub 110 to be in with a chance of that. But she looks like she's got a, a pretty good freestyle here. So we'll see what she turns at this 350 meter mark in. So it is uh, Brassington in the center in lane number five. And she looks good at the moment. Oh, big breath off the wall. Also in lane number seven going well is uh, Louise Bresler of uh, Guildford. And she's possibly got the faster of the two freestyles here. This is going to be a really interesting final 50. Closest to us in the blue hat of Guildford City is Louise Bresler. And Bresler just taking over the lead from the Mount Kelly students, Sophie Brassington in the centre. Also going very well right at the top there is uh, Emma Price. She does have a great freestyle and she's finishing really fast. Are they going to get close to the five minutes? Just outside, I think it's going to be. But the winner is, oh, she just glided in right at the, right at the end there, did uh, Louise Bresler, 5.03.46. Uh, one one hundredth of a second inside of her lifetime best. Who cares? It's going to say PB at the end. That's very well done. Four, 400 medley and you do your lifetime best by a hundred. Look at that. Well done. Yeah, it almost seems unfair sometimes. It, either that or when you finish on 0 0 1 or 0 0 2. My lifetime best forever was... 433-0-0. It felt like it was 0 But um, yeah, 0 0.02 off just being under that. It sometimes feels like a punishment, but great swims there this morning from these girls in heat number five. So heat six, normally the last three heats are seeded heats, but uh, for some reason, I've never quite worked it out. They only uh, seed the last two, two uh, heats. So, so. I I'll go with some rationale, and this could be totally wrong, but in international competition, 100s and 250s have semi-finals, so there's more chance for people to come and make it back in the finals, whereas in the four medley and four free, there's eight, uh, eight that can obviously come back, so there's only one final. So I think it makes sense that there's less spread because there's less chance to make it back. Does that make any sense? Is that about right? Yeah, I Take think so. Your marks. Did you understand any of that? <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm looking a little bit quizzical because I did understand it. And I was going to say, and this is going to sound really rude, so I'm not going to be rude. I was going to say, so what? But, you know, but no, what, what I meant was, what's the difference between circle seeding the last two heats or the last three heats if you don't have a semi-final or you do have a semi-final? Because your better swimmers are closer together in the last two heats because there's only eight spaces versus they can be more spread out across the last three because there's 16 spaces to make it through to then whittle down to the last eight. It used to be three a long time ago, but then it changed. Amy Wilmot, Commonwealth champion, 400 medley, 
I'm going to take your word for it because uh, you're far better than me at 400 medley and you know what you're talking about, so we're going to go with it. So <laughs> that's it. That is the word. The word according to Amy Wilmot is correct. I'm not quite sure how to explain, but sh what she said, I agree with. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. Someone does. <laughs> no. Oh, gosh, it must have been fantastic to win that race. It's not the only race you've ever swam. It's the only one I've been talking about, but uh, certainly in terms of uh, Ford and Med, you did it. You were in all the finals, weren't you? Yeah, quite a lot of them. Um, my first Olympic Games I qualified for at this venue, so it was really special for me to be be here. And obviously 12 years since London 20, 2012, which feels like an absolute lifetime ago. Um, so, yeah, my Olympic dream kind of came true in this venue. And obviously it's so iconic to then swim at a, at a home Olympics. So. Yeah, plenty of 400 medley highs and definitely, obviously, 400 medley lows, but that's, what's, that's what elite sport is all about. Well, it sure is. And uh, talking about what it's all about, lane zero, for some reason, seems to be a super fast lane here. Lydia Cordell from Repton is leading right at the top there in that blue hat. And Repton having a good meet here as well. And Lydia Cordell in lane zero. Well, she's meant to be ninth fastest of these 10 swimmers but uh, she's currently leading coming into the halfway turn and this 400 medley it's uh, it's heat six so we're getting to the sharp end of this women's 400 medley Lydia Cord leading in lane zero from Lacey Roberts of Plymouth Leander in two and then in lane six Libby Freeman probably just about third but uh, certainly over first is Cordell in zero with Roberts in two Freeman in six Rathbone Jones in lane number one, these outside lanes seems to be the lane to get. Yeah, I think sometimes there's less pressure on you when you're in an outside lane because the expected people to win that race are to come from the middle because on paper their times are faster. I know when I was in some outside lanes at international events, I kind of thought, well, no one's really watching what I'm doing, so I'm just going to get in and do my own thing. So it does sometimes give you that that ability to be a little bit more relaxed and just think, right, what am I doing? I'm out the way, I can't see what anyone else is doing. I'm gonna get get in and do my race plan. And we are seeing a lot of that from these outside lanes, especially in this Ford medley. We sure are, and it looks like in lane num number two now, Lacey Roberts just starting to catch up that silver bullet hat of uh, Plymouth Leander, but still holding on. Right at the top there, Lydia Cordell, she's, uh, she's gone really well. Fly back, excellent. Still holding on this breaststroke leg. Both pretty good breaststrokers, and they're uh, well, they're holding on really well. Maybe the green hat right in the centre is Hazel Ann Carter of Wickham and District coming back on this breaststroke too. Yeah, she's starting to kind of creep back into that race. It's almost like getting yourself back into it, and the race kind of starts again from the from the last hundred freestyle when these girls are a little bit closer together. So we'd want to see these girls get really tight round this turn, not trying to take a load of air, looking at the ceiling and coming round. Want to be really tight, really tucked off that wall. If you can get past the five meter mark in this event, it is actually really tough to do. So yeah, just really, really holding that holding their breath but being really controlled in and around that turn and that transition well she looks fantastic she did uh did have good turns lydia called right at the top there still going well and hazel ann carter of wickham district in the green hat right in the center also going well so it's lane zero and two also going well still is uh, is lacy roberts so it's lane zero lane two lane five right in the center also coming back on this side of the pool Right at the bottom there, Annabelle Cook with Livia Kingsland of Nova Centurion also going well, but still right at the top. Lydia Cordell, well, she's held on all the way through. The fly, the back, the breast she held on, and the freestyle, she's swimming away. This is really good. Yeah, I think we might be just outside that five-minute barrier, but she's really far now, clear ahead of the rest of the field. And the last five metres into the wall, obviously our clear winner. Nice to see that sprint finish, and she's done it. 4.59.69, so I have stand corrected. Our first swimmer under five minutes. That was fantastic. Oh, she's just seen the board. Go on, give us a smile. <laughs> she's exhausted, leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> she's 13 years of age, and she's just gone under five minutes for 400 medley. Very good. Thank you so much. Wow, 13 years of age. Led from the start. What a swim. She's got enough energy to go over the lane line and over the gap. Good on her. Look at that rosy cheek. She's been a, she's a, been in a battle, hasn't she? She gave it everything. Big lifetime best. 
So the results of heat six of the women's 400 medley, Lydia Cordell wins it for Repton, second Lacey Roberts, third Hazel Ann Carter from Wickham with uh, Livia Kingston in fourth. There was a DQ unfortunately, back to breast turn, Louise Rathbun jones of Cardiff. So heat seven of eight, the first of the cycle seeded heats in Katie Shanahan of University of Stirling. First chance to make the team. What a swimmer she is. She's had a fantastic couple of years, hasn't she? Silver, the European Championships on 200 backstroke. British short course champion, 200 medley, 200 back. Fabulous Commonwealth Games as well. She's in lane number four for University of Stirling. Take your marks. So, in his seg. We won Beetham of Camden Swiss Cottage in zero. In one, it's Matilda Porter Potter of Leeds. Two, it's Abby Roscoe of Rural Metro. Buddy Robinson of Repson in three. And four, it is Katie Shanahan. Five, Amelia Proxage, the champion on the 1500 metres freestyle, the 14 year old double national senior champion on 1500 free. And she's still only 14. That's extraordinary. Elsa McDonald of Edinburgh University in six. And seven, it's Sheila Robinson of Sheffield. Eight, Holly Marshall of Repton, and nine, Billy Threlfall of Leeds. Well, in the centre there, in lane number four, Katie Shanahan of Stirling. That's a place you trained for quite a long time. And uh, what a fantastic programme uh, Steve Tigg and Brad Hay have put together there. Yeah, it's a really nice place to train. Um, really good group, senior elite swimmers. They're starting to get a, a lot more swimmers in that programme now, which is really good to see, sort of coming through when we're seeing lots of University of Stirling swimmers in those finals but we would expect Katie to be clear ahead of the rest of the field in this swim her lifetime best is almost 10 seconds faster than than the rest of the field so she'll not necessarily be thinking about the rest of the swimmers in this race she'll be thinking about what she needs to do to set her up for tonight's swim when she comes back and she's after that all-important uh, Olympic consideration time and here's a question for you Amy because um, you to make the Olympic team, it doesn't matter what time you do in the heats, obviously, as long as you get through to the final, but you can't do an Olympic consideration time in the heats and have it qualify you for the Olympic Games. You can only do the time in the final to have it count. Now, of course, you can swim quick in the heats. You can go under the qualification time if you want to. That's your call, but it doesn't give you a, a, a seat on the train to go to, to Paris later on. So given the fact it's Ford and Merle, given the fact it's a pretty hard event, Tactically, what would you do if you had to deliver your best self, your your best time ever in the final this evening? Would you push to get rid of the cobwebs, or would you would you try and maybe conserve a bit of energy so you can try and really give it all the beans in the final? I think you never want to rest on your laurels and just swim to make the final because if Katie goes in here this morning and goes 450 something, might easily make the final tonight in one of those outside lanes but then she's got to take off like to, uh, over 10 seconds to get anywhere near that time so it doesn't really do your confidence a lot of good so it's good to see here that Katie okay, this is the first time we've seen her in the pool I think this week so she'll want to get in this morning and swim well enough that she gives herself a confidence boost but not obviously kind of put all her eggs into that basket this morning because she can conserve a little bit but she looked really good there her backstroke turns were incredible she went i think it was 12 meters nearly underwater which in 400 medley trust me is i could never get past i think it was eight or nine before my lungs were about to burst so she's got phenomenal underwater skills she's really long on this breaststroke she's just got four very nice techniques which is exactly what you want in medley swimming such a lovely lady as well and the, the team there at Sterling well they're having a fantastic meet so far already on the team they've, they've got a fair few swimmers yeah Keanu McInnes on night one was was a real standout for me in that 200 butterfly Kathleen Dawson last night um, obviously another friend from the University of Sterling that 100 backstroke and then Lucy Hope helped that relay get that consideration time um, on night one so yeah they're having a really good start to the week if you add into that equation Katie Shannon here Fully expect her to make the team. We've got Duncan Scott's first race is this morning. The men's 100 metres freestyle. That's going to be an absolute crack of that race. There's going to be some world superstars who won't even make the final. That is going to be a fabulous race. That, and then uh, people like uh, Ingrid Evans on the 100 metres breaststroke. She's got a great chance of making the team too. So the Sterling team is, uh, is very, very strong and swimming really well here. 
Yeah, lots of opportunity. And I think in the past it was kind of a male dominated program. But in the last few years, I moved up there. We've had Kathleen. There'd been a little bit more of an even split with Ross Murdoch. And yeah, there's four girls, potentially Duncan. He's kind of getting a little bit outweighed at the moment. <laughs> I'm sure he loves it. Duncan Scott, one of the world's nicest guys. Absolutely fabulous chap in and out of the water. What a swimmer he is. The most successful British Olympian in any one Olympic Games. Four medals, a gold and three silvers in Tokyo. Gold on men's 4 by 2 free relay. And here, Casey Shanahan, well, she looks very, very good indeed. Excellent backstroker, super breaststroke and freestyle art. Freestyle's good too, look at this. Well, the time doesn't really matter, but it's not bad at all. 4.44.25, so she will definitely have a centre lane for the final. And it looks to me like she's swum it like she wants to make sure that she gets through, but it's not easy to go 4.44, is it? No, swimming a 400 medley, regardless of how fast it is, is sometimes just as, as difficult. I think it's the same with 200 fly. If you have an easy 200 fly, it's never really easy. It sometimes feels more difficult. So it looked like this morning there, Katie went out quite strong. She turned, I think it was 2.14 in and around that halfway mark. She's got the capacity to be out a little bit faster than that. But it looked like her breaststroke, she was just nice and relaxed. And her final 50 there, 33 points, not nowhere near what we know she can come back in. So she's definitely got a lot more in the tank tonight. Well, top six under five minutes, but no doubt about the uh, winner there by nearly nine seconds, over nine seconds. Katie Shanahan of University of Stirling, Holly Robinson of Repton second. So that was the second last heat of the women's 400 medley. This is the final heat of the 400 medley. Look at that right in the center in lane four. Listen to this, Freya Colbert, world champion 400 medley. Won that title in Doha in February of this year. There she is. What a swim that was. Yeah, it was good to see the British girls at, at that championships really stepping up. We had a lot of um, really good swims, especially on the girls' side early in the season. And I, I know Freya said she, it was a bit of a surprise and she's not really focusing on that. And the Olympic trials for these girls and, and, and guys in, at, at this point of the year is their main focus. Take your marks. The final heat of the women's 400 medley, Anna Farrow of Bath in zero. And one, it's Katie Lee of Salford. Amelie Smith of Tunbridge in two and three, it's Varley of Plymouth, Colbert in four, Michaela Glenister of Stirling in five, Susie McNair also of Stirling swim, swimming in six, in seven it is Matilda Boggle of Ipswich, eight is Eleanor Broughton of Repton and nine Abigail Miles of Sheffield. Two Stirling based swimmers in this. Yeah, Michaela in five been at the University of Stirling for a couple of years now. It was nice to see her. I think she was back on the podium in the 1500 free yesterday. So that's really nice to see her kind of back on form. She was a, a really good um, fauna medley swimmer at junior level. So it's good to see her back in the pool here. But it is Freya um, already leading this 400 medley. 15 to go on the butterfly. And she just looks nice and long and comfortable. She'll have seen Katie's time in the heat before. And even though they're both guaranteed spots in the centre of the pool. They might be playing a little bit of cat and mouse. Freya won't want to kind of have Katie too far ahead and get, getting too much confidence. And tonight, they'll really need each other to push towards that time. Well, it's a very fast time. It, they're both capable of it, but uh, it is very quick at 4.37.8 is the nomination time for the Olympic team. 4.37.8. They won't be going anywhere near that in the heats, I'm sure. But uh, in that final tonight, they've got to duck under it. And if you do go underneath that nomination time in the final and win, you'll be going to Paris. If you go under the nomination time and come second, you will then will be nominated for the team, but they will be considered, and the performance directors uh, will get together and uh, have a chat and decide whether they actually want to, uh, who they want to be on the team, but I'm pretty sure if you do go under the time and come first or second, you'll be you'll be selected. She's got a great uh, fly back. Her freestyle is utterly brilliant, Freya Colbert here won the 200 metres freestyle on the first night, so she's already going to Paris for, well, it would be for the 200 free. She's actually said she doesn't want to swim it individually. That's an interesting one. Yeah, traditionally, they were always on the same day, two, three, four medley, so the programme here has allowed Freya to do both of those swims. So, um, yeah, I never, ever swam four, four med and two, three in the same session because it, it's just too tough, and especially as you become sort of more senior swimmer and you're focusing on specific times to make it into international teams. So Freya there out a little bit slower than Katie was, 2.17 versus that 2.14 that we saw Shanahan in the heat before. But Freya has got that lovely strong 
freestyle. So I, I think both girls here will have just swam a comfortable 400 medley to blow enough cobwebs out, but not give themselves too much to take off tonight to get near that 437 mark. Well, Dave Hemmings, uh, a very good breaststroke coach. He's had Molly Renshaw and, of course, Abby Wood, both Olympic finalists in the women's 200 metres breaststroke. And uh, the breaststroke of Freya Colbert really has improved an awful lot since she's joined Dave Hemmings and the team there at Loughborough Performance. Fascinating stroke, but very, very efficient. That is a typical Dave Hemmings stroke, isn't it? Yeah, she looks a little bit like Abby, I think, when she swims um, breaststroke in particular. So really nice long strokes. For me in four medley, if you're doing like 50 strokes a length, obviously that's a massive exaggeration, but you're going to be wasting so much energy kind of in and around that 20, 22 mark. At max is probably enough to, to have a long breaststroke and just almost reset because the race for me and the race at international level, it takes off from the moment you hit this breast to that front call, the race just splits enormously and the winners go and everyone else is kind of trying to hang on and I was one of those hanger oners quite often. <laughs> Well, the winners go, and uh, this is where she won the world title. She wasn't leading after the breaststroke leg, but she came through on the freestyle leg and, and just reeled them in one by one. It was very impressive to see. It really was beautiful freestyle. It's almost like it's almost like the Olympic final of the beautiful freestyle stroke. There, look at that. Fabulous stroke. Yeah, she's really long there. She's not pushing it. It's nice and relaxed. And she, I, I would say that she's having a comfortable swim. She's not really brought in the legs at all. She might maybe just bring them in a tiny bit down this second 50 but she's just doing enough to swim a lovely pretty 400 individual medley which doesn't often happen <laughs> well it is a luxury but it's going to put her in a center lane for the final and then well there's going to be fireworks in the final this evening between here the world champion freya colbert from love performance and the katie shanahan of university of sterling who won that uh, that previous heat and i'd love to see both of them ducking under that consideration time of 437.8 the winner if they do go under it will go that's a comfortable swim it was 444 in the first heat 448 for Freya Colbert but she'll get a center lane and that's a good swim second was Beatrice Varney third Michaela Glenister so I think they'll uh, they'll all be through to the final as well Susie McNair fourth 453.9 I think she's going to be on the edge we'll have to wait and see for that one Look, at she doesn't even look like she's tried. That's amazing. Thank you, <laughs> yeah, it's well within her comfort that this morning. 4.48. Here we are. Heat 8, obviously it was Freya Colbert there leads the way. Beatrice Varley in second and Glenister in third from the University of Stirling. So let's see the qualifiers. I think, uh, yeah, there we go. Katie Shanahan fastest seed into the final with Freya Colbert second. And those two really are a class apart, Beatrice Farley third, fourth in is Glenister, fifth in is Robinson, but those two, Shanahan and Colbert, they can do the time of 4.37, 8 in the final, and that's going to be fireworks, it's going to be fascinating to see those two swimmers in that final tonight, 4.37, 8 is going to be so, so tough, but they can do it, Colbert's already booked her seat on the, uh, on the team for Paris, Katie Shanahan not quite yet, this is her first event here, but I'm sure she'll make it rest of the uh, competitors well, there were a fair few in this was like 76 or something like that in this uh, women's 400 medley it's good to see so many swimmers in this race in all honesty quite often we've had just a few heats of the women's 400 individual medley so to see the depth especially coming through is really good for the gen future generations of medley swimming in this country it really is well uh, hopefully we'll get a, a quick chat with our two superstars our world champion Freya Colbert and Katie Shanahan talking to John Mason. Well, I'm standing here with uh, Katie Shanahan and Freya Colbert, of course, uh, our two fastest qualifiers tonight. A relaxed swim in the heats there, but Freya, world champion earlier this year. It's your main event. How did that feel for you? Yeah, it was pretty relaxed. I mean, it's an event that I like swimming. Obviously, it's quite painful, but I'm good at it, so I'm so quite like it. But I mean, Katie wasn't there in Doha, so I'm really looking forward to us having a good race tonight when we're both in like top condition we're both fully rested and I think hopefully it'll be a great race for all the spectators and everyone watching at home absolutely you know I was just saying to Katie there it's a tough race when you're out on the front in, in front like that but in tonight's finals you two going head to head is going to be a good one yeah it's always so good to Freya like you know whenever we do 4am like anywhere you know world Europeans even here like 
even like smaller meets like Edinburgh International we had a few weeks ago it's always so good having Freya and you know we push each other so much and we all obviously both want the best of each other so yeah it's really good having her there. Well, I can't wait to watch what you do tonight good luck and God let you go swim down. Uh, right it's back to Paul Noble for that men's 53. Well, 50 Butterfly is John, but it is a multi-class event. And two swimmers taking the start for this one. We have Bruce D from Northampton Swimming Club in lane number four, and Xander Harris from Devonport in lane number five. Both in the same class, it's multi-class, but they're both the same class, so we will see a points total generated at the end, but it's a real head-to-head -head here. Very similar impairments. Take your for these two, swimmers with uh, dwarfism. Seen a few swimmers on the GB team with dwarfism over the years. It's inspired by the great Ellie Simmons, who of course is uh, on duty here with the commentary team on poolside. What an inspiration she has been and the heroics that she had here, right here in this pool in 2012. So Bruce Dee with that black cap going really well. Uh, expect a high turnover on the butterfly and he's going to be first in to the wall I think Bruce D will get in there and it's 34-02 excellent time for Bruce D that is an improvement on his best time of 35-23 so massive improvement for Bruce D and he's delighted with that one as he looks up to the scoreboard it was at 34.84 for Xander Harris, and that's an improvement for him, but just by one one hundredth of a second, but they all count. So two personal best times there. Bruce D, massive improvement for him. 7.21 points, and Xander Harris, lifetime best for the Devonport swimmer in second position. So that was the one and only multi-classification event for the time being. We're going to stick with the sprint the 50 metres freestyle for women about to go. And the British record still held by Fran Housel from 2014, a 10-year-old British record, that's amazing. Eight heats of the women's uh, 50 metres freestyle. This is heat one, there's just three swimmers in it. Jessica Harmer of Guildford City in uh, three and four. Emma Hagberg of Reeds in five. Eloise Cole of Bedford swimming team. Emma Hagberg, the fastest C, 27-0. Two one-hundredths of a second splitting these three swimmers on the seed time coming in. Two one-hundredths. Right in the centre, the fastest seed is Emma Hagberg of Reeds. I have to say, I didn't know where Reeds was, but I'm told it's in Cobham in Surrey, beautiful part of the country. And this, the... Uh, First of eight heats of the women's 50 metres freestyle. Closer to us in the red hat, going really well is Eloise Cole of Bedford. She looks fabulous down this uh, second 25, head down. Really fast turnover. Does she get the finish? She does. Her time 26.77. Well, that's really good. That's uh, four tenths of a second inside of her lifetime best. Well done. A little bit of a smile as well, I think, there. Well done. That's excellent. So, straight in. And it's a new lifetime best, 26.77 with uh, Hagberg also going a lifetime best in second place, 26.89. And right on her best is Jessica Harmer. So three really good swims in the first heat. Well, the winner there, 26.7, faster than all of the swimmers in this second heat of the women's uh, 50 metres freestyle on seed times. None of them seeded under 27, and she's just gone 26-7. So I'll tell you what is going to be happening for certain. There's going to be a lot of adrenaline flying through the, lung, the, uh, the, the veins of these women. Lanes 1 to 8. Lanes 0 and 9 not filled. Take your marks. Heat 2 of 8 of the women's 50 metres freestyle. And right in the centre, Molly Garrett. Of the city of Manchester is the fastest seed. She's had a good uh, a good start to Isabel Ocaro of Repton. She's uh, had a really good start in the centre. Look at that, the black hat right in the centre, and it's a very good swim at the moment. She's got to hold on on this, uh, on this second 25, but this is good. Her sister is also in this event in a later heat, but this is a great swim. Look at that. Well, 26-4, entered on a 27-0. 
It is a new lifetime best for Isabella Ricara, and that's very good indeed, 26-4. Well, already, they're meant to be still on the 27 seconds on seeded time, but, um, but this uh, is very fast indeed, and confirmation of the result of that second heat, the Repton swimmer, Isabella Ricara, sister's uh, still to swim in this event, she wins it. 26-4-1, it's quick. That was a big win, wasn't it? Half a second on a 50 freestyle, my goodness. So heat three of eight in this women's 50 metres freestyle. We are rattling through. It's uh, it's going to get to the uh, the super fast ones very quickly. Well, we've just had a really quick heat from that um, Isabella Ricaro. And the seat times here, 26.9 to 27.0. So again, seven one hundredths on paper splitting the whole field. Take your marks. Hannah Murphy, the fastest seed from uh, Royal Tunbridge Wells, Monson right in the centre in lane four with Catherine Ellen de Poole in five. A really good start in lane number two, though. That's uh, Imogen Mears of Bromley. The Bromley swimmer with a white hat up there in lane two has started very, very well. Can she hold on inside the second 25? Imogen Mears, a lifetime best, 26-6. And she's going well, and she's still going well. Can she finish off, hit the turn? She can, she's hit the finish well. 26-1, a half a second lifetime best. Wow. Well, the Bromley swimmer, Imogen Mia, swam really well. Yeah, these are sensational times that we are seeing. As soon as she hit the water there, it was just, she just took off. There was some good reaction times in the middle of the pool. But as soon as they got into their stroke, the Bromley swimmer, Imogen Mia, is fantastic there, 26.16. 26-4-6 in second, then it was a tie for third between Emma Wood and Sophie Davis. So the times just keep tumbling here. So this now already heat four, already halfway through this women's 50 metres freestyle. Fastest seed from West Lothian, one of two West Lothian swimmers here at this championships. Natalie Marshall. Coached by Gordon Glasgow. Gordon Glasgow. What a Scottish name that is. Natalie Marshall in four. Five is Anna Tyers Take your marks. Derby. So heat four of the women's 50 metres freestyle. Marshall in four, the fastest seed with uh, Tyers in five. And good uh, start right at the bottom here is uh, Bethany Walker of Sheffield. She had a very good start, but now right in the centre, lanes four and five going well, Marshall and Tyres, it's really tight, very hard to see. There we go in lane number five, it is Tyres of uh, Derby, just about leading maybe, coming back in three. It's uh, Bullat of Lincoln, who's got the touch? It is, I think it was Bullat, 26-9, 26-9 wins it, but uh, slightly slower heat, but uh, Bullat in lane three wins it. And a double second, tied for second place. Really close it was, Anna Tyres and Jessica Hum, and only seven one hundredths of a second splitting the top three, eight one hundredths of a split second splitting the top four, eight one hundredths. Oh, yeah, really close contest this one. A few dipping under the 27 second mark. I met Gordon Glasgow this morning in the four, you'd be glad to get a mention. <laughs> Cracking name, Gordon Glasgow. Where's he from? <laughs> That's a good accent, Andy. Well done. I'm, I'm been impressed. Uh, I've been listening to the experts sitting next to me. <laughs> 15 times Paralympic medalist. Paul Noble. So, heat five. Over halfway through this women's 50 metres freestyle. Heat five of eight. Six, seven and eight and other the uh, seeded heats. So, this is the last of the unseeded heats. And Holly Wilson, the 15-year-old from City of Leeds. Fastest seed in the Take your marks. Uh, she's done uh, consideration time already. And, uh, well, she could do it in the 50, the 100, the 200, the 400, the 800, and the 1500 freestyle. Already done the two and the 15 European Junior Championships. So, uh, can she for the to qualify for the European Juniors? Holly Wilson in four, which is very tight indeed. Maybe up there in lane one, it's Nicole Dupree of Millfield, right at the bottom as well as Megan Higgins of Millfield. I think Megan Hill Higgins has got it, 26-3. Another lifetime best there by 0.4 of a second for the winner. Very good for Megan Higgins, second in lane eight. So nine wins it, second in lane eight, Sienna Franklin Miller. Third was Bethan Cook, 26-5, some really quick swims there. Yeah, 
just two swimmers not under the 27 second mark and again with the entry times as close as they are Andy 17 one hundredths of a second separating everyone so really danger all over the pool in these early heats We've got to keep our eyes peeled from right from lane zero to lane number nine but moving in now to the specifically seeded heats we should see a little bit more of a spearhead well we certainly should do and uh Caro sister number two in this one. This one, this time it's Eva. Her sister won uh, an early heat. Great swim it was from her, but Eva, very fast indeed in four. She's got a chance of making the Olympic team on that four by hundred free, you know. Take your marks. Oh, well, I think we've had a uh, a disqualification there. Where there was a there was a noise at the start, so oh, I don't quite know what we're going to do here because um, there is no uh, flag. There's no false start rope, so I think these swimmers are going to swim the full race. They're going to probably have to re-swim this because uh, there was noise at the start, and I think that pro probably triggered lane one. I think it was that went early, Hannah Capron. Uh, Cap so I think they're going to have to do it again, I'm afraid. 25-5, well, it's not a bad swim, but uh, just outside of her lifetime best, Eva Okara ended up winning it, but I think it's going to be a dead rubber, so to speak, because uh, I think there was a false start there was noise at the start and i do think if that's true let me see who went it was uh, lane to, uh, lane two darcy revit of guildford but there was noise so if i was her coach i think i'd go and have a quick check with the uh, the referee here and say that wasn't fair i don't quite know what uh, what will happen here this is going to be very interesting there's lots of chat going on what do you reckon paul well you don't see it very often it just depends if they I mean, it was obviously, she was away before anyone. They're going to class it as a faulty start. A false uh, start sound went off. But the times were still registered. Just wonder if they're going to have a meeting with the swimmers here to ask them if they maybe want uh, to have a re-swim or are they going to be happy with the time? So the swimmers making their way up. Just wonder what is going to happen here. We'll just bring it news of that when we can but they are, the swimmers are moving towards the referee I think Andy yeah they, they're going to have a quick chat with the referee and uh, I, I would imagine there'll be a re-swim because there was uh, a fairly loud noise right from the start which I would imagine would have uh, certainly put off the swimmers but I would imagine that we'll probably swim the final heat or well, final two heats heat seven and eight but there's uh, yeah, we've got a couple multi-class multi 50s as well so they might swim them as well give these swimmers a, a little bit chance to rest yeah but uh, there are the 10 swimmers. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to guess that they've got another chance to swim, you know. They're just having, having it to explain to them at the moment down the other end of the pool. But uh, we're going to go straight into heat seven. We may sw see all of those swimmers again. I'm not sure I've seen that many times, you know, Paul. The, the, the full race being swam. They used to have a, a full start rope, which was pulled to stop them and they'd swim into it. It was always quite dangerous because going yeah, full pelts yeah. into that hurts. Anyway, this is, I think it's heat seven, isn't it? Heat seven of eight of the women's 53. Sky Carter in lane four. Theodora Take Taylor in five. The second last heat of the women's 50 metres freestyle. And drama already in that previous heat, but uh, very good start in lane number three. That was Harriet Jones of City of Cardiff. Four, Sky Carter, fastest seed. Herself coached by a, an old Olympian, Doug Campbell. And Theodora Taylor in lane five and it looks like maybe in six at the moment Clementine Lovell of Lepera University going well but it's so tight in the second maybe in two it is is it Katie Goodburn very close indeed who got it it was a Lovell Lovell wins it Clementine Lovell of Lepera University gets the touch but it was mighty tight 25-8-2 25-8 second was equal second so five one hundredths splitting the top three Clementine Lovell wins it with a tie for second. Katie Goodburn and Sky Carter. What a close race. This is going to be tight to make the final. Here we are, four swimmers under the 26 second mark. Clementine Lovell, Katie Goodburn and Sky Carter. Well, we haven't seen many swim. I don't think we've seen any swim offs so far, but that was a tie for second place. I wonder if we're going to get something, some more drama in this 53 style. Yes, I think there was a situation where there could have been a swim-off, but uh, very sensibly they decided to, to, to use an extra lane. 
and had nine swimmers in the final, which uh, I have to say I was delighted about. Here we go, the final heat of the women's 50 freestyle and Greg Britain's Olympic champion, Anna Hopkin, from that uh, mixed medley relay in Tokyo, world record holding, Take world record setting off. relay. She's in four. Hopkin in four, Isabella Hindley in five from Loughborough performance, coached by uh, Mel Marshall in three, it's Evelyn Davis of Sterling, but the, uh, the two teammates from uh, Loughborough Performance Centre, Hopkin in four and Hindley in five, and look at that right in the centre, I mean, they're so quick, Anna Hopkin, and she is a class apart, absolutely fabulous sprint freestyle, is so powerful, look at this, goodness me, 24.65 is the time that she'd be looking for this evening, 24.65, well she's just gone underneath the nomination time for the Olympics, you can't actually have it count in the heats so she's just gone under the time she must do it in the final in order to make sure that she's uh, on that uh, train to Paris in July but Anna Hopkin putting down a marker there all she's got to do is repeat and that's very good indeed the only swimmer under 25 seconds and it was a great swim 24-5 24-59 Anna Hopkin wins the final heat of the wins 50 meters freestyle a great swim from her Hindley second, Clifton third, and it's going to be so tight to make that final. Normally, we would now, after the final heat, have the, the full summary, but I think uh, the women in the heat six are probably going to go and have a swim down, and I would imagine come back later in the, uh, in the session and swim that uh, heat six again. You there can, was you a can just see noise. them in the shot there, Andy, I think, just walking through, just into the into the uh, swim down pool. So I think uh, John is with Anna Hopkin. Well, I tell you what, Anna, a great uh, heat swim there for you. Obviously going under that nomination time. We're just going to replicate that tonight, right? Yeah, it definitely gives me confidence for the final. And <laughs> it's always a bit nervy doing the first race. That was my first race of the week. So blow the cobwebs, <laughs> cobwebs away and uh, yeah, looking forward to the final. You say sort of giving yourself that confidence. Did you were you expecting to hit that coming into the heats, or was this just like your warm-up run? Um, I wasn't expecting to go that fast in the heats. I think it's probably one of the fastest heats I've done, so it looks good for tonight. But I just need to keep my composure and try and go a little bit quicker. You've got this. Look, uh, good luck tonight, and we'll see you then. Right, it's back to the guys in commentary. Well, she did look good, didn't she? She looked really good. A fantastic swim. I'll just let you know that that's, uh, that uh, Heat 6 will be swum again. It will be swum again at the end of this session. So we'll have to wait for the qualifiers for that uh, final session on the women's 53. But straight over to you, Paul. Yeah, it's the multi-class 50 freestyle. That is going to be a very close battle for the final in that women's 50 freestyle. Again, it's all about the points here in this multi-class event. So a range of classifications in this one. Ellie Chalice goes 9-0. There's the centre lanes. Grace Harvey and Tully Kearney. The two GB teammates. Tully Kearney, world record holder in the S5 classification. So she'll be hoping to try and go close to that time. Just getting the flag set up for this 50 freestyle race for Aaron Snedden. She goes in lane number two, the S6 swimmer. Personal best of 37.98. As I said, a range of classifications in this one. We have Ellie Chalice in lane zero in the S3 classification. Right at the top. Claire Connan with that City of Cambridge hat. She's in the S4 classification. Fern Snedden next to them, S6. One of two S6s in this one. Amanda Redhead from Maxwell goes in at lane number three. We saw Grace Harvey, who's also an S6 in lane four. Tully Kearney make her way into the water, lane five. Eliza Humphrey back in the water again. Eliza, we saw her swim previous event. She's a swimmer in the S11 class, a swimmer with little or no vision should be wearing black turk goggles northampton team have got a big presence in the para swimming events and also in the olympic events as well great setup there in northampton connie ratley goes in at lane number seven for colchester and evie lambert for the borough of kirklees is the final swimmer in this 50 freestyle two s9s in Seven and eight closest to us, the two youngsters. 
expect Holly Kearney starting from the water to have a decent points total here. Might as well drag it older. Clear Conan also starting from the water. The lowest numerical class in this one. The swimmer with the, the most impairment is Ellie Chalice right up there in line zero. A little bit of a delay there at the start. Swimmers, of course, in para swimming, they are allowed to have adaptations at the, the start. Coach is allowed to hold them into position. Tully Kearney's got a starting device that she uses in lane number five. Some swimmers with amputations are allowed to have a towel on the blocks just to stop abrasions. Amanda Redhead going from a sit start. All these kind of adaptations to the start have got to be agreed by the, the technical officials, the referees, Take before they're carried out. Watch for Tullikini in the middle in terms of points. The fastest swimmers will be closest to us. Connie Ratley off to a good start. She swims in the S9 classification, so the least impaired of any of the swimmers in this one, along with Evie Lambert. They're both in the same classification, very similar impairments. You see the tapping stick there of Eliza Humphrey as she's about to hit the wall. And the two S9s into the wall first. And a couple of good times in the 600 point range. There's Tully Kearney as we expected, 862 points for Tully. And the only swimmer that may be able to challenge this is Ellie Chalish right at the top, the S3 swimmer. Not sure if she will, but 525 for Ellie Chalice. Thank you, sir. British record holder, but there's Tully. Thank you, sir. Please Time please for please Tully Kearney, 35.76. Well, had uh, great Paralympic Games, taken gold in Tokyo. And 100 freestyle. It's not a Paralympic event for Tully, this 50 freestyle in the S5 classification. It's a shame for the GB team and for Tully because Tully and Susanna Hicks have dominated the 50 freestyle in the S5 class over the last few years. So, shame for the GB team that's not going to be offered in Paris, but Tully and Susanna Hicks will have the 100 and the 200 freestyle. Oh. Well, that didn't work for Tully. <laughs> in the water again. These lane ropes quite often a little bit of a struggle for the Paris swimmers actually. They're just slightly off the wall. So if you're coming out from the side, you've got to make your way over that lane rope, this little gap, and onto the pool side as well. But a nice swim from Tully there, 35.75. Almost the season's best for her world record. Stands at 34.07. She already made the nomination time in the 200 freestyle a couple of days ago. So she's having a good week to the QE. Second of the two heats. That's the lineup for this one. We have Scarlett Humphrey this time, sister of Eliza. Scarlett Humphrey, I think, may have a chance of achieving a first nomination time of the week. Alice Ty goes again, of course. Great swim that she had yesterday, although she wasn't happy with it. It was a huge points total. She should make the standard time for the S8 class, but we want to keep an eye on Scarlett Humphrey. One lane from the top. Take your marks. 31.81 is the time that Scarlett Humphrey is looking for. The uh, visually impaired swimmer wearing black out goggles. One lane from the top. As I said, she is... Uh, British record holder at 31.37, so she has been able to dip under that standard. But as we saw with Stephen Clegg last night, it's uh, sometimes visually impaired swimmers can have uh, little collisions with the lane ropes. Big collision in terms of Stephen Clegg's swim last night. But here is uh, Kelly Ann Warrington, 28.68. Well, the S10 swimmer going very close to the qualification standard, the nomination standard. But going back to Scarlett Humphrey, 865 points. Is Warrington delighted with that one? And I think Scarlett Humphrey's done it. 
30.64 for Scarlett Humphrey, and that will be inside the nomination time. And it was also inside the British record with the delighted Kellyanne Warrington first to the wall. Excellent swim from her under the 29 seconds for the first time this season. 28.35. Is the nomination time so only 0.3 of a second outside that one we'll just wait for the results to be confirmed as uh, the blacked out goggles of Scarlett Humphrey on the other side of the pool is checked there's Alice Ty 31.50 for Alice Ty there's Kellyanne Warrington 873 points with Scarlett Humphrey and Alice Ty second and third And into the final. Some of the swimmers not able to qualify for the final, but there are the eight qualifiers. Kelly Ann Warrington leads the way. Scarlett Humphrey, that's the nomination time achieved for Scarlett Humphrey. She'll be delighted with that one. And Tully Kearney close behind, just ahead of Alice Ty. As we go down to the final finishes there, Ellie Chalice in 19th place. Well, a great uh, heat swim there by uh, the wonderful Tully Kearney. Now, Tully, I didn't get a chance to chat to you the other night. You made that time, that nomination time, uh, in the 200. So the 50 must have been a nice splash and dash after that. Yeah, it's quite nice to have a short event after that. Yeah. And I know you said to me uh, earlier that the, the road to sort of getting back here has been a bit of a tough one. To, so, so to hit that time the other night really takes the pressure off. Yeah, I mean, honestly, with the classification issues and... Uh, post-concussion syndrome over the last almost 18 months now I really didn't think I'd be able to make it so just hitting that on the first day was a massive relief. Well you've qualified third into tonight's final so replicate that we'll be seeing you on that podium good luck. Right thanks guys it's back to you. Thank you John so you join us for the next event it is the men's 400 meters individual medley there's five heats of this and the fastest seed is Fergus Thompson of Mount Kelly. Right in the centre. Donatas Dragasius of Manchester in five. Take your marks. So 50 athletes in this men's 400 metres individual medley. And Fergus Tom Thompson of Mount Kelly, right in the centre, is the fastest seed. Maybe going out uh, the best is Andrew Jones of the Royal Wolverhampton School up in lane one. A black hat up there. That's a good first 50. As Amy Wilmot was saying earlier, just got to get through this butterfly without really hurting arms or legs. And then maybe the backstroke is a little bit more using the arms, the brushstroke maybe a little bit more focus on the legs. And then... As Amy said, the freestyle, the race really gets going. The, the big guns really start taking off on that freestyle, and that's where she said it was one and lost. It's interesting, because I've watched Ford of Medley for many years, and it's the breaststroke for me that just sorts them out. But uh, Amy, very clear that you've got to get through the end of that breaststroke, and then the freestyle is, is really the one where the winners win it. So the fly leg is over. That is a leader uh, down in lane number eight. Is, uh, is uh, Joseph Ashley of Liverpool. Joseph Ashley, coached by his dad, Darren Ashley, at the City of Liverpool. Being coached by your parents in Liverpool, I have to say, I know exactly how that feels. Mama Jameson uh, was uh, my coach there for many, many years. And Joseph Ashley, coached by his dad, Darren. So his good fly leg and the red hat at the bottom, but very good backstroke now in lane... Is that lane three, I think it is? A Ransom, Daniel Ransom of City of Leeds. So Ransom in three, Thompson in four, Dragis, uh, Dragasius in five of Manchester. But uh, really good from the lead swimmer here, Daniel Ransom up in lane number three. Yeah, it's very interesting to hear Amy this morning talk about that 400 metres individual medley. I didn't uh, do a 400 IM myself, 200 IM, I like the 200 IM. 400 I am not a Paralympic event when I was competing so didn't have to go that double distance thank goodness <laughs> I did try it a couple of times I never uh, never liked it 
Well, it's as good a reason as any not to do a Ford and Medi. I mean, most of us try and find, desperately try and find a reason not to do a Ford and Medi, but as they go, that's a pretty, pretty top excuse. It's not a Paralympic <laughs> event. But for this guy, well, he's doing really well. Daniel Ransom of Leeds, just starting to uh, eat into that lead up there in lane one is uh, Andrew Jones, the Royal Wolverhampton School. Lane zero, of course, at the top, that's Miles Turner of West Suffolk. But uh, in lane one, Andrew Jones just starting to catch up now. Daniel Ransom in three, also going well in uh, lane five, I think it is. Uh, is that uh, Donatas Dragius, Dragasius? Maybe it's in six. Yeah, and uh, that yellow cap of Leeds would become accustomed to them leading the way in the heats. But again, as we've seen in this individual monthly, I think I, I would be with you, Andy. I would say the, the breaststroke, very important, especially in the 400 metres individual medley. We can see things change about people come back into contention in the breaststroke. And, you know, the turns as well, as you've spoke about both the Dross and Amy this morning. Again, very important to get in to the turn quickly, especially on that breaststroke to freestyle turn. I always think get into the turn and immediately you're on the freestyle and you know you've got that advantage of being on the faster stroke very quickly you're claiming an advantage on the people who are still on the breaststroke so that is a uh, great freestyle at the moment though Finlay Davis coming really through very strongly in the Midlothian summer it is indeed Finlay Davis but his breaststroke was really strong in his freestyle equally as strong look at this his legs are really driving Breathing to his left-hand side. Still going well as Daniel Ransom in the centre of City of Leeds, but uh, well, he's got about a five-metre lead at the moment as uh, Finley Davis of Midlothian Swimming Club. Conan Barton, his coach up there. His lifetime best, 4.37.9. 4.37, he's going to go way underneath that. He's going to go close to 4.30. 4.32 or so. Look at that, 4.32.6. After 4.37.9, five... Five second lifetime best, 5.3. Well done. Gracious me, well, his breaststroke and his freestyle were outstanding. Really well. Really were. So, uh, Finney Davis's breaststroke and free, really good. He wins it. Second was Daniel Ransom of Leeds. Third was uh, Ollie Jones of Poole down in lane number seven. Well, that's a serious lifetime best there. Sorry, yeah, Paul. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic second half there for Finley Davis at Midlothian. He just came through the field very strongly on the breaststroke. Daniel Ransom held on for a second. It was a close contest there with Ollie Jones just beginning to come back. But these are cracking times again in these early heats. Finley Davis, massive improvement. So there's no drama in this one. We'll get a clean result. Taking a little bit of time, Andy. Yes, it's, uh, it's normally a slightly nervy time if they take a little bit of time to confirm the results. Just check there's no disqualifications. But, uh, well, the first to touch the wall, we'll have to wait and, uh, and confirm whether he's won or not. Um, I didn't see anything, I have to say, but then I wasn't looking awfully carefully. Certainly down the far end of the pool, it's not easy to see from here whether any infringements have, uh, have happened. But uh, Finney Davis's second half, the breast free, was really very good indeed. And if that stands... The five second lifetime best in the 400 medley is pretty special. We're still just uh, waiting to confirm the result. Well, we've, we've had a share of dramas <laughs> in the first three days, haven't we? We have. We have lane lines breaking. We've had re swims on 50 metres freestyle races. The, the, the craziest re swim that I've seen it was in a relay where someone was standing, the false start rope was up. It was about three quarters of the way through the race. The, the spectators were very close to the side of the pool and one of the, the spectators, one of the swimmers, I'll come back to that. So there we go. In the end, it was uh, fully confirmed, no disqualifications. Finley Davis wins from uh, Midlothian, a new lifetime best for him by an awful long way. 4.32 is great. Ransom second, Jones third. Still interested to hear the end of that story, Paul. We'll go to that in a second. So, two of the men's 400 metres individual medley. Fastest seed 
Fergus Thompson of, oh no, excuse me, that's uh, hit one, hit two is uh, Philip Novaki. So here we go, Philip Novaki is the fastest seed from uh, Jersey Tigers. He's right in the centre in lane number four. 61 on the 100 metres breaststroke on the first night, qualified for the junior European team. 400 medley, 100 breaststroke. That's an interesting double, the 400 IM, 100 breaststroke. His 100 breaststroke was really brilliant. Yeah, the breaststroke, as we said, very important in uh, the individual medley. I always worked very hard at doing the 200 IM. I always did the, the breaststroke fault was one I needed to work on. So watch out for him on the breaststroke element of this 400 individual medley. I was saying, yeah, the, the race that we had, it was a relay race up in Glasgow. I think it was the last length, actually. And the uh, spectators very close to the, the side of the pool. And one of the one of the swimmers on the pool side, some, some, some teams went through, I think four teams went through the halfway point of where the full start rope was. One of the swimmers encouraging their teammates hit the full start rope, came down the pool, four teams were past it, four teams got caught by it. And they big conflict with the referees, and it was decided that you could uh, the teams that had finished could decide to keep their time. No. Or because they were finished, didn't affect them. Or they could choose to re-swim. You're kidding. But they had to lose their first time. They didn't get to choose the best time. Gosh, that's wow. That's an interesting one. I'm not. That's, that's that, a bit of a dilemma, isn't it? Is you think we've done really well, or can we do a little bit better? We finished second. Can we do a little bit better? Get up to gold? That's what happened. That, that was the craziest one I think I've ever experienced. That's bizarre, I've got to say. I've never heard that one before. Ah, good one. Nice one. I didn't, uh, I didn't know about that. Anyway, here we go. This is uh, heat two of five of the men's 400 medley. And up there in lane number three, going very well at the moment, is uh, Adam Wilson of Loughborough University. In two, actually, it's a Luke Poulton first to turn. It is, in fact, Luke Poulton. Sorry, I've got my, uh, I've got my lanes uh, wrong there. So Luke Poulton of Wickham District, the first to turn at the halfway mark in this, the second heat of the men's 400 medley. Poulton leading, and there he is in that green hat. Nice high breaststroke, very similar breaststroke to some of those... Uh, 200 meters breaststroke women really nice and high getting as much distance as possible out of every single stroke also going really well in lane number five is uh, charles kershaw of loughborough university in five that black hat right in the center lanes those two yellow lanes denoting lanes four and five so it is at the moment charles kershaw leading from luke Poulton in second third it's novaki of jersey tigers and that yellow hat, a fabulous breaststroke. That 100 metres breaststroke, 61, is something special as a junior. Yeah, that was uh, incredible. Put him into to one of the, the finals, one of the main finals, rather than the youth final. And he looks extremely strong here on this breaststroke. Big glide at the front of the stroke here, but really powerful as he comes down towards this turn. Good shot. Navaki just coming through into third, uh, fourth place there, third place in fact. Goodness, it's all across the pool. Kershaw looking good at the front. Well, Kershaw does look very good indeed. He's breast free, fantastic. He's working hard, a little bit short maybe on that left arm. But, um, oh, he's really uh, he's really effective. So right at the top there also coming back is uh, very well as James uh, Froggart. Of City of Birmingham, he's having a good freestyle leg, as is uh, Luke Poulton. So, first over is Kershaw, second, I think, right at the top there in lane zero, it's James Froggart of Birmingham. It is Kershaw, Froggart, Williamson, Poulton, Novaki. Look at this, well, his seed time for uh, Charles Kershaw 4.33. He's got a lifetime best of 4.30, and he's going to be quite close to that, just tying up now. Getting a little bit tired. He's certainly going to go under his seed time of 4.33. That's his season's best, 4.33. And he's uh, done 4.31.2. So that's a very good swim from him. A new season's best by two seconds from Charles Kershaw to win the second heat of the men's 400 medley. Second, right at the top there, was James Froggart in a 4.33. A new lifetime best for him by three seconds. Very good from him. And third, Sam Williamson of 
University of Bath. And again, another lifetime best for him by over half a second. So some, some more cracking swimming in this uh, Aquatics GB Swimming Championships for 2024. There's confirmation of the result of Heat 2 in the men's 400 medley. 431 wins it from Charles Kershaw. Second was James Froggart. Third, Sam Williamson. Porton and fourth. Yeah, he looked delighted with that one. A little bit of a fist bump at the end there for Kershaw. He's struggling for oxygen at the end, but managed to keep his head down in the last five there. Yeah. Number three of the five heats. Out to go. Downside, Summers there's Daniel Jackson from Borough of Kirklees. Well, there's the Derwent side swimmer. He's uh, not sure. <laughs> I was looking for the Derwent side swimmer. Derwent as well. side swimmer isn't in it. No, he is. He's, number uh, four, he's actually, I think it is. Jay Manners. He's actually, yeah, he's actually wearing a Durham side uh, hat, but he's from Northumberland and Durham. Jay Manners. Just looking for the yeah, comp go. composite club. Maybe representing Northumberland and Durham here. That's a Northumberland and Durham side. <laughs> <laughs> it's heat three. Last of the unseeded heats. Ends 400 medley, and Jay Manners from Northumberland and Durham is in lane number four. And uh, in five, it's uh, Ollie Pope of Thanet, Daniel Jackson of Kirklees in lane number six. But the four lineup: Joseph Buxton in one for Reading, Porter of Camden in two, Kendrick of Swansea in three. From, again, from Wales, from City of Cardiff, it's uh, really an archer uh, in lane three and four. It's Manners, five is Pope, six is Jackson of Kirklees, seven is Shevchenko, Royal Wolverhampton School, Rapson in eight from Birmingham. And the Mount Kelly students closest to us in nine, Denmark. Yeah, most of the action in the, the outside lanes, but again, expect the swimmers in those centre lanes, the fast swimmers with... It's difficult to tell in a, a 400 individual medley where the strengths are on the individual strokes. As Amy was saying earlier, things can switch about. Strong breaststrokers come back into contention later in. The, uh, this uh, IM backstroke can also be a very important one. It can really, you can certainly not win the race on the backstroke, but you can create great advantage. I remember the breaststroke was always one of my strengths in the individual medley, and I raced against someone who was very strong backstroker, and I always used to turn onto the breaststroke, and he would be miles ahead of me. And that was always like a disheartening thing to look at him. But as soon as he got into the breaststroke stroke, that kind of gave me a little bit of heart as I was coming back towards him. But yeah, the backstroke can cause a lot of damage. It certainly did with my eye. Well, I suppose the other interesting one in backstroke is if you work your legs really hard, which uh, several people do, if it is your strength, you've got that balance of do you use it and do you use it hard and work really hard. But if you use your legs on backstroke, you try and use them on breaststroke afterwards. That's really not easy. But a very good swimmer here in lane number five from Ollie Pope of Thanet. Do love the Thanet hats as well, that great big star on the, uh, on the hat of the Thanet team. Like that a lot. So here we go, a halfway mark in this third heat of five of the men's 400 medley, the last of the unseeded heats, and Ollie Pope leading for Thanet. James Shevchenko of Royal Wolverhampton School second in that blue hat, just two lanes from the leader. And between those two, it's Daniel Jackson of Kirklees. But the white hat up there, Still leading of Ollie Pope, and Pope's going well. He's a good, solid breaststroker, but uh, starting to catch up a little bit, I think, is, uh, is Shevchenko from the Royal Wolverhampton School. And the blue hat down in seven. Let's see the splits. Yeah, he's about a second and a half faster uh, on that uh, on that 50 metres breaststroke split. Also, maybe a much faster one is uh, between the two of them. Daniel Jackson, he's had a very good turn. Uh, First 50 on the breaststroke. Yeah, and he's the underwater there. Almost took Shevchenko into the lead, that great underwater work on that uh, breaststroke turn. Jay Mann is also making a move here in lane number four, the, the Derwent side swimmer, but Derwent side cap from Northumberland and Durham performance. Great breaststroke. 
really strong finish to the breaststroke for G-minus. Well, he was two seconds faster than the rest of the field, just on that second 50 of the breaststroke. It, it really does shatter everybody else if you've got a really strong breaststroke here. And uh, Jay Manners of Northumberland and Durham looking very good on this freestyle leg too, right in the centre, the fastest seed. His seed time, 4.30.8. Just missed out on one of those fastest two heats. Only just missed out on the seeding by two tenths of a second. Really was very close indeed. 50 metres to go in this the third heat of the men's 400 metres individual medley. And Manners looking good. Down in lane seven, still Shevchenko with a blue hat on. There's the leader. And he's swimming away, breathing to his right, breathing away from the rest of the field. Just on the right-hand side, bottom right-hand side of that shot is Shevchenko just in second with Jackson maybe third, but also coming through. Gdaniak of Mount Kelly right at the bottom. Can't quite see him in the shot. There he is in the white hat. It's uh, Jay Manners is going to win it. He does the time. 4.29.4, really good from him. His first time under 4.30. 1.5 seconds inside of his lifetime best for Jay Manners. Great swim. There you go. There's a reaction. I've been looking for that for the last two days, Paul. <laughs> Yeah, yeah fantastic. So Jay Manners thumbs up. Fist bump. That is brilliant for all Jay Manners. Just looking at the last two heats. And well, certainly a chance of another swim tonight, you would think. B final at the very least, you think, for Jay Manners. Great stuff. Must be. We'll see him again. Let's see another one of those uh, reactions. Jay Manners wins it, 4.29, his first time under 4.30. Shevchenko second, very fast finishing. Gdaniak of Mount Kelly in lane nine. The slowest seed comes third, really good from him. 4.31, big lifetime best from him. Heat four, the first of the two seeded heats in this men's 400 medley. Fastest seed is uh, Charlie Hutchinson, second fastest in Britain this year. His best uh, is 4.17.6. Just outside of that this uh, season so far, and 4.17.8. Just two tenths behind. Another one of that Dave Hemmings stable. What a year Dave Hemmings has had. World champion woman 200 fly. World champion woman 400 medley. Take your marks. Hutchison of Loughborough Performance Centre, the fastest seed in lane four with Ben Harrison in five. Edward Moss, uh, Marcel Whipples of Chelsea Westminster in six. This uh, is his best event, the 400 medley. Also had a really good 200 fly. Be interesting to see how this uh, race unfolds. The big guys right in the centre, also going well in uh, lane two, is David Annis of the Royal Wolverhampton School. Expect him to uh, make the European junior team this year. This is his best event. I've uh, seen some of these swimmers in, in this heat. They've already had uh, busy programmes. And Karish Kadaka back in the water again from the city of Leeds. But I think this is the first time this week we've seen Charlie Hutchison. And Ben Harrison. Well, yes, Paul, you're absolutely right on the Kudesh uh, Kodaka in lane number nine, right at the bottom of the yellow hat of Leeds. Here's a double for you. 1,500 metres freestyle, 400 medley in the same session. <laughs> yeah, bring it on, bring it on. Come on. <laughs> no, no, not a chance. I've got to tell you, I don't think I've ever seen anyone take that on. He's just out the side of the shot in the yellow hat, right at the bottom. He's in the closest lane to us, Koresh Kadaka, and he started pretty well, but my, he's a machine. There he is. If he can do 1,500 free, 400 medley in one session, he's an absolute machine. And he's 400 was sensational the other day, wasn't it? Very good indeed. Really was. I'm oh, my goodness, I'm going to have to stop thinking about that. 1,500 free, <laughs> 400 medley in one session. That's brutal. But uh, just at the moment leading is Edward Marcel Whittles of... Chelsea and Westminster really swam a great 200 metres butterfly here. And the coach there, Lisa Bates at Chelsea and Westminster, doing a really good job. They're having a great meet by the Chelsea and Westminster team. She's one of the Olympic uh, coaches going to Paris. Already selected the coaching team. So there we go. First to turn up the halfway mark in this the first of the two seeded heats. It's heat four of five of the men's 400 medley. Edwin Marcel Whittles of Chelsea leading from Charlie Hutchinson, well, Hutchinson having by far the better turn in lane number four, and the Black Hat just starting to take over there, taking the lead in lane four. Yeah, looking very good, Charlie Hutchinson. A little bit of a individual medley, specialist Charlie Hutchinson. 
see them compete in many other of the individual strokes. Some of the, the swimmers who see them compete in the individual form strokes. But Charlie Hutchinson very much a specialist here in the individual medleys. And again, as you said, Andy, based in Loughborough. We've had huge success in recent times. Marcel Whittles is still holding on to that very slender lead, but still right in a good position here. As the other breaststrokers begin to just begin to come back. But Charlie Hutchison certainly looking to make his way into that final with that entry time of 4.17. He might not be close to that in this qualification heats, but he's going to have to try and see off the challenge of uh, Marcel Whittles. He would love to finish first, I think, just to get a good lane in the final next to his teammate, probably Max Litchfield, who goes in the final heat. Well, this is a very impressive swim from the Chelsea Westminster swimmer in, uh, in lane six in the blue hat closer to us. It really is leading is uh, Charlie Hutchinson as expected. His lifetime best 417. But uh, seven seconds slower on paper is uh, Edward Marcel Witness, the Chelsea Westminster swimmer. And after that great 200 fly that he swam last night, uh, he's on great form here. He's got 50 metres to go and he could certainly make the big final in this 400 medley if he keeps this up. It's uh, eighth fastest seed coming into this uh, championship, so he's got a cracking chance of doing it. But uh, with a swim like this, I'd be surprised if he doesn't make it. Hutchison leading. Second at the moment is uh, Marcel Wickles in six, but coming back pretty quickly up there in three. Is it three or two? It's uh, lane two. David Annis of Royal Wolverhampton School. So Hutchinson wins it, 4.21.8. Second, 4.23 is Marcel Wickles. A new lifetime best from him. And I think that'll qualify him for the final. That's a really good swim, the big final. Third was uh, David Annis in a 4.24. That's a uh, new lifetime best for him as well. <laughs> He's just, he just kissed the camera straight. <laughs> Someone's got to go clean that, come on. Blow your nose before you do that next time, will you? <laughs> no, it's a good swim. It's a solid swim. He's done what he needed to do. He's won the heat. There's only two seeded heats on the 400 metres races. So as long as he wins one of those two heats, he's almost guaranteed to get through to the final. Yeah, it looks confident, looks really good, Charlie Hutchison. 421.85 for that one ahead of Edward Marcel Whittles. Uh, David Annis in third position, but yeah, just uh, five summers under the 430 mark. So that swim in that previous heat from Jay Manners looks like it is going to earn him another swim, you would think. Certainly will. And, uh, well, if you're going to come to a championship like this, stick in your very best and see what happens. And that's exactly what's happened here. Look at this red hat. Great to see him back. It's Max Litchfield from Loughborough Performance. Fourth at the Tokyo Olympics in the 400 medley. So close to winning a medal. Love to see him get under the uh, qualification standard. His season's best is uh, 4.10. The time he's got to go tonight is 4.11.9. One job to do here, though, is just simply to get through to the final in a decent lane. Take your marks. Ruben, Rogoth and Keating of Loughborough University in lane zero. Evan Davison of Perth City in one and two. It's Greening of uh, Stirling. Three, Anderson of University of Stirling. Teammates, four is uh, Max Litchfield. And five, it's William Riley of Cardiff. Six, George Smith of University of Stirling. Seven, another Stirling student. Is Andrew Bertoli. Eight is, uh, in lane eight is uh, Tom Robinson. And in nine, it's Oscar Dodds. Yeah, Litchfield, definitely the class of this field. You would expect him a little bit like we saw Freya Colbert and Katie Shanahan in that women's 400 individual medley. Just make sure he's placed at the front of the field. Uh, Colbert and Shanahan, well, he's eased back in the later half of their 400 individual medley in Litchfield. Good lead as they go through the butterfly, but we expect him maybe to come off the gas in the later stages of this one. He's making a statement in the early stages, Andy. Well, he looks very comfortable, doesn't he? I mean, when you see a really world-class swimmer doing their thing, it just looks effortless, doesn't it? And 
it's quite interesting because some of them you know bashing it out and they swim pretty quick and and they get a bit fast and they're still bashing it out and then when they get really quick when they get properly world class it looks like this it looks like he's hardly trying beautiful technically good underwater him and his uh, his brother actually joe's absolutely outstanding underwater but expect it from uh, dave hemming's swimmer he's a proper technical uh, technical coach very good at his detail as dave hemmings and the backstroke of litchfield well he was just on the lane line coming off that wall he's come over to this side lane line he needs to possibly just think about learning to swim a little bit straighter i don't think he's pushing it one of the challenges on backstroke if you don't go full bore is your body position changes he's not quite as flat as he could be he's clearly not pushing it as much as he he certainly will do in the finals this evening and when you do that sometimes your body position changes a little bit it's not easy to swim slow which is a bit of a bizarre thing to say paul but it's not yeah, well it's not your body position does change as you say uh, the legs can drop your arms not in the, the correct position so some great shots there of the the backstrokers going down towards the finish end we had a shot earlier on of katie shanahan just showing her technique and that was a good one of litchfield as well uh, Amy was talking about the position of the hands on backstroke, but both of them, Litchfield and Katie Shannon, great technicians. And he's a great technician on the uh, breaststroke as well. Smith going well in second, but he's not going to catch Litchfield and see what expect him. He doesn't have to go hard on the freestyle. He's got clear water all around him. Well, he doesn't have to go hard at all, but this is quite interesting because this is the end of the breaststroke leg. And he's going to go to freestyle now, which is much quicker. So while he'll be swimming freestyle and swimming away, they'll still be swimming breaststroke. And he's going to have about a six or seven metre lead, is he? Maybe seven or eight metres, very fast around the wall. He's pushing this, you know. This is interesting. He's not going slow at all. Look at his legs as well. Well, I thought he was uh, going a little bit more comfortably on this heat of the 400 uh, medley. But I'm just sitting up a little bit here, Paul, because this is a very good swim from Litchfield in four. It is, yeah. 4.11 uh, is the time he has to go tonight in that final. Maybe just a little bit of a, a tester for Litchfield as they go over on that final turn. Uh, 3.45 there, so it's not too far away from his uh, time that he swum this season, but Litchfield absolutely dominating this one. Smith in second, but well behind. Well, when he won the silver medal at the World Championships here in Doha, he's He's only two seconds behind. 4.10 in Doha, only two seconds behind that, uh, that time at the 100 metres to go turn after the breaststroke turn. So this is going to be, what, a 4.12, 4.13, something like that? A little bit slower, 4.15, he's eased up a little bit. So off the gas on that, uh, on that final 100 metres. Well, <laughs> there's me saying he's taking it easy. He's, 300 metres was really quick from Litchfield and 4.15 is fast, very fast indeed. Well, he didn't need to go that quick, but it's great to see him back in the British National Championships and this one, the Aquatics GB you, 2024 Swimming Championships, the Olympic trial, and that was a very good swim from him. Litchfield wins it, 4.15.0, seconds George Smith, University of Stirling. And third was William Riley. There we go, confirmation of the result of the final heat. Litchfield wins it from Smith, Riley, Peace Greening, Sterling in lane four was fourth. Evan Davidson fifth and Angus Allison also going under 4.30. So qualifiers for the big final. No doubt about the fastest swimmer. Look at that by a mile. Max Litchfield quickest in with Charlie Hutchinson second, George Smith third. Pierce Greening's made it. Well done. Yeah, Jay Manners at the top of that second screen there. So you will. Uh, rewarded for that swim that he had in one of the non seeded heats. He would be in the B final. Of course, junior final, A final, and B final tonight. So we see 30 of these swimmers. Not 30, sorry. We're in eights, aren't we? 24 of these swimmers. Indeed, it is. And it is. Well, great swim from Max Litchfield. He's now with John Mason. Well, uh, Max, I know it's a tough race, that 4 a.m., but that looked pretty relaxed to me coming in uh, for a heat swim tonight, setting yourself up for uh, for finals this evening. Yeah, 4 a.m. heats, you know, they're never, never easy, even when you chill. Um, but no, it felt really nice, uh, nice and smooth, and 
hit the process as well. And um, yeah, we've just got to see what we've got, see what we've got in the tank tonight, basically. Yeah, and uh, you, you know, we've been looking at that time, people hitting those NT times this week to yeah. confirm their spots to Paris. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fast swim, but you, you've hit that before. Yeah, obviously I hit it in February in, in Doha, so I've done the time so far this year and been in and around that in off-season swims. So it's, it's, it's a race tonight still. We've got, we've got to do it on the day. So um, re rest and recover now and then uh, see what we've got tonight. Well, look, I can't wait to see you do it. Look, I'll get, get, let you get off and swim down. I know you need to. Right, it's back to the boys in commentary. Well, thank you, John. It was a very impressive swim indeed, certainly to 300. Seems to take his uh, foot off the gas a little bit down that last 100, save himself a little bit and uh, not create quite as much lactic acid, that stuff that really gives you the... I don't know any other way to describe it, the owies. <laughs> the owies in your legs, it really does hurt, doesn't it? So the first heat of the men's 100 metres freestyle, this event is going to be an absolute cracker. We have so many high-class, world-class sprint freestylers in Britain at the moment on the 100 and the 200 in the men's events. It really is uh, absolutely stacked, and this is going to be quite sensational. It really is. There's going to be some world-class sprint freestylers who are not going to make the final. Take your marks. So heat one of eight of the men's 100 metres freestyle, the fastest seed. It's uh, Marion Dean of Chelsea Westminster Road in the second in lane number four in five, though. Good start from Alex White of uh, Exeter. Yeah, 100 freestyle. It's going to be fast, though. There's not much room for error in this 100, especially with the, the big guys that we'll see in the, the later heats. The entry times for these four swimmers, just five 100 <laughs> separating them. And there's not much separating them all as they go in the second line here. Oh, thank goodness for electronic timing and that 50 splits, I've got to say, because that was enormously close. Right at the top, maybe at the moment, Evan Davis of uh, City of Cardiff going very well. Lifetime best of 52-1. Well, I would imagine these guys are going to be trying to go as close to 51 point as they can. 51-49, 26-8 back. 51-49, over half a second lifetime best there for the winner, Evan Davies of City of Cardiff. First two under 52 seconds, 51-9 for Din, 52-1 was third, so it's uh, very, very good swimming indeed. And it's those kind of things that really shake up the next heats when they see stuff like that. Yeah, the depth in this 100 freestyle and from these swimmers in the early heats right through to the big guys you'll be seeing in the, the final heats. It's absolutely incredible in Britain. got to tell you these final heats are going to be such fun they really are the seeded heats I mean already we got uh, really quick swims and the pressure already starting to build if you're in one of those final heats and you see the half second lifetime best in the first ones you just know it's going to be quick take your marks Jacques Bonsell of uh, Bath Performance in lane number four in five it's Jonathan Tucker of Mount Kelly and well, a very even start maybe in lane six. Ben Blowers of uh, Loughborough University has started maybe the best. The Black Hat, four lanes from the right-hand side there. That is Ben Blowers of Loughborough. And he's looking good down this first 50. Yeah, I thought he got a very good reaction there. Also going well right at the top as well. Again, we shouldn't be surprised in these early heats because the, the margin between them is very, very small and, well, choose a winner from this one Andy good luck in calling this one maybe lane zero going very well still well, it is Finley Club right at the top there from University of Edinburgh just at the moment but coming back in three is Henry Baker of Stirling and these two wow it's going to be tight look at this they're coming all over the place charging everywhere Finley Club just gets it 51.3 another seven tenths of a second lifetime best for the winner you've got to have a bit of attitude on the 100 freestyle come on yeah there you go he's very mild very mud. Oh, I tell you what, he's smooth. He's very smooth. What a swim. Finley Club, University of Edinburgh, wins it 51-3. A great lifetime best from him. 51-4 from the Mount Kelly student as well. Great swim from him in second. Another lifetime best. Lifetime best all over the pool. Finley Club just he almost hopped out of the pool there. Almost, almost in one movement. It's amazing what a good time can do, isn't it? I know, he's got to style it out. No, I'm not tired. <laughs> to get him a stride. So lane zero has withdrawn in this uh, the third heat of the men's 100 metres freestyle. So just 
nine swimmers in this, the third heat of eight of the men's under three. In lane four, it is Matthew Baker of uh, West Suffolk. In five, it's Anthony Whittle of Stockport Metro. Hit three of the men's 100 metres free start. And Matthew Baker of West Suffolk, fastest seed. Hasn't had the best start, though. I think possibly that's uh, closest to us is uh, Oliver Watts of Loughborough University. Right down at the bottom here. It looks like it is the Loughborough University student. Also, right at the top there is uh, Reed Jones of Plymouth Leander. He's going well. Look how close this is. Right at the bottom, we're right. It's uh, Oliver Watts really quick down the first 50. Yeah, incredibly. Quick first 50 there for Watts, and he's very close. It's almost stroke for stroke. The swimmers there, the three swimmers almost in formation there with the, the stroke rates pretty similar as they come into the last 15 here. It's still tight. The Molam of uh, Plymouth Leander going very well in lane number three. Who's going to get the touch? Maybe seven. Who's got it? It is indeed lane seven, Luke Ibbotson. Luke Ibbotson of Loughborough University, 51-1. Well, his lifetime best was 51.6. It seems to be that the theme is half a second lifetime best to win the uh, win the heat. So it's getting quicker and quicker and quicker. It's already heat three and we're 51.1s. These last three heats, I've got to tell you, strap yourselves in for those last three heats. Put your cup of tea there. Drink it now. Drink your cup of tea now because it's going to be absolutely hopping in those last three heats. There's I say we've probably got about 14, 15, 16 really world class 100 metres freestyle swimmers. Probably 12 or 13 of them think they're going to make the final. There's only eight lanes. There's only eight lanes in the final. There's going to be some really quick guys who are going to be enormously disappointed not even to make the final. Yeah, it's a massive event. Of course, because of the strength, Andy, that the relay spots up for grabs as well tonight. So it's important to be in the mix. As a junior in uh, lane four, the fastest seed, and in lane eight, lane eight, 16 year old, great talent. City leads again. Take Yellow your hat down the bottom there. So Nick Finch is the fastest seed from Chelsea Westminster in lane four. Great fly freer. He's had a very good start indeed. That's a super start from Finch right in the centre. Really good down this first 25. Look, looks very powerful, long and strong. Harry Robinson of Loughborough University also going well. Now in lane five in the black hat. Robinson leading, possibly from Finch right in the centre there. Yeah, fast turn from Robinson, but good underwater work there from Finch, bringing him back alongside. And for a change, it is the two centre lanes who are leading them, and they're almost uh, head to head. Swimmer in lane four, Finch just eyeballing the one in lane five, and it looks like he might be going past him. So Robinson in five, looks like he's got it at the moment, but they're charging. Look at this in eight, it's Gabriel Shepard, the youngster. Has the youngster got a 50.3? His lifetime best was 51.4. He's just done 1.1 seconds inside his lifetime best at 16 years of age. That is brilliant. City of Leeds, 16-year-old wins it. Gabriel Shepard from lane eight. What a swim that was. Finch second, 50.5, 50.6 was third. We're already very close to going under 50 seconds. Well, that is a consideration time for the European Junior Championships, that 50.33. First two swimmers going underneath that uh, European Championship Junior consideration time. Really great swimming from the juniors. Well, here's another one we saw on that, that very first day in the 400, wasn't he, Shepard? That's impressive. It really is impressive. Cam Curl. Well, we're not even in a seeded heat yet. We've got Cam Curl in here. Rio Olympian, lifetime best of 49.3. To be sure of making this final, you know, you're probably going to have to, well, give yourself a chance. You've got to go 48 point to make the British Championship final. Probably make a 49 low to make it, but don't, uh, don't risk that one. Take your marks. Well, the fastest junior in Britain was uh, Jacob uh, Mills in lane number three. We've just seen a fantastic swim from Gabriel Shepard in lane eight in the previous heat. 
Cam Curl, the fastest seed in four, but look in three. He has a very aggressive pacing in three. That's Jacob Mills. He really throws himself at it. He's gone out quickly. Look at the speed of his turnover. Well, what a start from Mills. Can he hold on to that in the second half? It's very close along the pool, but Cam Curl is maybe just on the, the feet now, moving up the body of Mills as they go into the second 50. Well, Jacob Mills of Sierra Le uh, Leicester really swimming well with about 20 metres to go. He's holding on at the moment, still got a very fast turnover. Coming back is Cam Curl, though. Are they going to go sub 50? 50.7 is the seeded time. Curl, I think, is going to get it. Yes, he does. 50.13 wins it. Wow, that was close. Curl wins it in 50.13. 50.27 was second. Aidan Simmons Brown, third was Jacob Mills in three. Fourth was Fraser Lewis, uh, Lewis Fraser, excuse me, of Swansea. Wow. 50.1 was uh, first, 50.31 was fourth. It's 50.1. Is that going to be good enough for even for a B final? I I'll be honest, I don't think it's anywhere near. I really don't. Right, the fastest uh, three heats, the seeded heats, they're cycle seeded, so. The fastest guy in the whole championship coming in will be in lane number four, Matt Richards in the final heat. The next fastest, Lewis Burris, will be in heat seven. Third fastest coming into this championship is in heat six here. It's Duncan Scott, it's the first time we've seen him. Olympic silver medalist on the individual 200 freestyle. A little bit of a delay right now while we uh, just get everything ready. So Duncan Scott in lane number four, the most successful British Olympian in Olympic history. Four medals in one Olympic Games, a gold in the 4x2 free relay, silver on the 200 metres freestyle, which is the final event of this championship. What a race that's going to be. I think we've saved the best to last. That's going to be a cracker. I think this is going to be very, very similar. The final tonight in this 100 metres freestyle, I've got to tell you, I can't wait for it. Yeah, it's going to be brilliant. It's 100 freestyle. We did talk about 400 IMers a little bit earlier on, Kitty Shanahan and the likes of Freya Colbert. Yeah, just uh, oh. fishing something out of the pool at the, at the far end there, not quite sure what it is. Last time yeah. I saw this was in uh, was in Delhi at the Commonwealth Games. Oh, there, well, that's a little bit of plastic, I think, of one of the lane lines, isn't oh, it? Not the lane lines again. Yeah. Well, yeah, last time I saw meat held up for something in the pool it was in Delhi and there were two beetles having a fight <laughs> <laughs> two beetles to get this one they were I think they were called rhinoceros beetles they were having a fight on the roof they both fell off still having a fight and they were fighting in the pool and they had to wait <laughs> while they fished them out <laughs> they were I tell you what rhinoceros beetles they were very well named they were big beasties they were huge <laughs> This is not good for these guys. This is a great oh. shame. We, we should uh, be able to get a swimmer in there to just go and uh, fish that plastic out. There's plenty of swimmers around who've just swum. I think they're going to do that. One of the guys is just going to nip over and... Uh, Barry Saunders might go in. I think he's making his way. I don't think right we're going to see Barry. I don't think he's... Uh, I don't think he's risk getting that beard wet. He's... Uh, I'll tell you what, he's a fabulous <laughs> chap. He, is. he really is. You, you don't mess with Barry. Uh, he keeps us right. Yeah, but they just, uh, there we go, Swimmers just got in to, uh, to fish that little bit of plastic out. Well, this heat's six of eight, it's the first of the seeded heats. Let me just tell you, we've got Alex Cahoon in three and four, Duncan Scott, five is Ed Mildred, six is uh, Thomas Watkin of Millfield. Just make the final. There's some very quick guys in here, but there's some super quick guys still to come. Just make the final, don't muck about, make the final. Then it's fireworks tonight, but... Uh, there's no hanging around here, and especially in this one, you don't know how fast the quick guys are going to go in the next two. I expect something pretty quick here from Duncan Scott. First time we've seen him at this championships. He's six of eight of 100 freestyle. Scott in front. Take your marks. So the first of the seeded heats in the men's 100 metres freestyle. The, uh, Consideration time for the Olympic Games is uh, 48.06. Really good start from Duncan Scott, and he's back half 100 metres freestyle. Ed Mildred also going very well, probably leading just about down this first 30 metres or so in lane five. Yeah, Duncan Scott just there or thereabouts, but he is a super strong finisher, Duncan Scott. Expect him to come through 
in the second half of this one. He's got company, though, as he's coming home for this final 50. Well, Cahoon in three is just about leading at the moment. Scott in four. These two guys going well, also going well in two is uh, Alex Painter. But uh, this is very tight indeed. I think Duncan Scott is starting to come through. It's really tight. Scott in four. I think it may be uh, Cahoon in three, is it? Cahoon gets the touch. 48-4. Well, that is a fantastic swim. 48-7 was his lifetime best. I tell you what. I wasn't sure that he was going to be in the mix. He's definitely going to be in the mix now. Look at this. Alexander Cahoon wins the first of the seeded heats. 48.44. Duncan Scott second. 48.48. Painter, 48.6. You're going to have to go 48 to make the final of the British Championships. Two oh more heats to come. Yes. Two more heats. <sighs> oh, strap yourselves in at home. This is amazing. Look at this lot. Litchfield, Burris, Dean, Guy, Evans. Come on. Wow. Well, this is uh, this is amazing. Olympic champion, double Olympic champion. There's two of them. Look at Burris. Oh, my word. There's our double Olympic champion. The first of two in this uh, final. There he is, Tom Dean. Won the 200 free, won the 4x2 free relay. Next to him is James Guy. James Guy in lane number six with a white hat on there. There he is, Jimmy Guy, double Olympic champion, four by two free relay in the mixed medley relay. Two double Olympic champions in one race and neither of them the fastest seed. Burris is in four is the fastest seed. Joe Litchfield in three. What Take heat. your marks. Well, they're gonna have to go mid 48s to be sure, you know, 48, four, four. In that last heat, very fast indeed. So this is the second last heat of the men's 100 metres freestyle. Litchfield in three, Burris four, Dean five, Guy six, Jones seven. The big guy's right in the centre. And Burris has gone out very quickly in lane number four. Very fast indeed down this first 50. Oh my goodness, what a start there for Burris. Also going well as Jones as well. They have gone out really fast, but can they hold on on this second 50? Wow. Well, Dan Jones, lifetime best, 49-0. And he's going really well up there in lane number two at the moment. Swimming very well indeed. This is fascinating. He's still leading, I think, at the moment. James Guy coming through as well. There's going to be some big boys missing the final here. This is going to be fascinating. Tom Dean came back at the end, 48-4. Wow, I think that's the third 48-4 we've seen so far. James Guy second, 48-6. Third, 48-9 from Dan Jones and Burris. Fourth, 49-0. I'm not sure that's going to make it in with one more very fast heat to go. Oh, my word. I did say some big guys are not going to make the final. Burris is in, finished in a very, very dangerous place there. First time under 49 for Dan Jones, the Welshman. Great swim from him. The final heat of the men's 100 metres freestyle. Well, it's almost who's not going to make it in. Gracious me, there is Matt Richards. British record holder, the world champion, 200 metres freestyle from uh, the Fukuoka World Championships last year. Olympic champion, 4x2 free relay, he's in lane four. Five is Whittle, the 19-year-old. He's already an Olympian, he's only 19, trying to qualify for his second Olympics. There's some quick guys in here, Jack McMillan as well in lane three. He's gone 48-9 before, needs to do that here, and if he does that, he's going to qualify, I think. It looks like a 48 point, and you might be in. 49, I don't think you will be. Final heat men's 100 free. Matt Richards in four from Millfield. Whittle, Take your five. marks. So the final heat of the men's 100 metres freestyle, it's been lightning so far. Really good start right in the centre there. It was Matt Richards in the black hat of Millfield. His coach, uh, Ryan Livingston, done such a good job with him. His British record, 47-4-5. Well, unbelievable start. David Cumberledge as well, going really well. The Edinburgh University, better known as a 50 sprinter, and he leads them through the 50. The big guy's in the middle. Great turn, though, by Richards. 
Well, it wasn't the fastest uh, split right in the centre. These guys in the middle have got to be careful now because going very well closest to us is David Cumberland. Can he hold on? He's going really well. This is a surprise. This is another swimmer we didn't expect to be in the big final necessarily. 48.7 is best time. He swam really well. Get in. 48.01. Massive wow. lifetime best. Goodness me. Actually, he finished second, 48-1-6 did Cumberland. Still a massive lifetime best. Richards came back very fast, 48-0-1. So Richards wins it, 48-0. Cumberland just whacked in a 48-1 from lane seven. That's put cats in pigeons, that one, isn't it? Look at that lot. Whittle's third, 48-4. I don't think I don't think, Macmillan, I don't think that's good enough for Macmillan. 48-7. 48-7 was fourth. Is that going to be eighth or ninth? Ninth, I think. 48 Nine was fifth. Well, that means Burris is definitely out. Goodness me. Here's the results of the uh, last heat of the men's 103. Richards wins it. Very impressive from him. He was slow out and fast back. Cumberledge, wow, that's surprising. Really quick. Whittle's in there. There's going to be some big guys missing out. Who's in it? Who's not? Richards is fastest in, that's for certain. Let's have a look. Richards is in. Cumberledge, Cahoon, Dean. What? Jimmy Guy's made it. Goodness me, McMillan just misses out. 48-75 does not make the final of the British Championships. Can you believe it? 48-9's not made it. 49-5 for the B final. God gracious. That's extraordinary. Absolutely amazing. Well, we did say don't muck about. 48. I think it was, was it 10th or 11th or 48? That's oh, so exciting. I think what's most exciting of that are British relay at the Olympic Games, and oh, that is incredible. really, really strong now. Really what, strong. What about David Cumberlege? What a shot that was. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I, I think uh, it was a masterful swim by Matt Richards. He did enough to win that uh, final heat and become fastest into the final. He's talking to John right now. Well, I tell you what, uh, an incredible last few rounds of heats there. Matt, congratulations. Qualified fastest and, of course, hit that time. We've just got to see it again this evening. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think, you know, that's the most depth we've ever seen in that event. Um, you know, it's a testament to what British women have been doing with the relays. Um, everyone wants to be part of that team, you know, so we knew it was going to be quick this morning. Um, it's going to be even faster tonight, but it should be a great race and really exciting. Yeah, and, you know, you, you talk about the depth of talent is there in there. Is, is, is there any pressure with that? Because it's like walking out on a world stage in a world's final with those times. Oh, totally. Yeah, 100%. I mean, like, you've got such great uh, depth in it now. Um, obviously, at the top end, we've got some really big names. Um, but, you know, all the way back through to, like, the B final now, we've got loads of guys in the B final going 48. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but it's really exciting for the summer and uh, even more exciting to see what everyone does tonight. Yeah. Fun for us to watch, is a fun to race. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, look, good luck tonight. Well done. Congratulations. It's back to the boys. Wow, I'm still coming off the roof. I've got to tell you, that is just incredible. Those uh, those hundred meters freestyle boys. The B final could be one in a low 48. The B final, and that uh, team now for Team Great Britain. It puts us in a great chance, certainly, of making the final at the Olympic Games. And I'm starting to think possibly medals. Is that uh, maybe a little bit too early? Medals, Paul? Well, no, not with these displays. Richards was good, though, in that second half of that one. 48-0, he'll be the favourite <coughs> to claim that automatic spot. Finished the session this morning with these multi-classification 100 freestyle. Two you can start for this first of the four heats. No Will Perry in the centre lane, but we do have Lyndon Longhorn at the top of the picture there, and Zach Washington Young. Zach Washington Young, we saw him in the 400 freestyle earlier this week. So from a decent time, he was pleased with that time that he's done. He's been in the para programme now for few years he's uh, acquired his impairment through an accident back in 2012 that Washington Young go through there in 35.43 just let's watch out for Lyndon Longhorn as well different classification of course that Washington Young in the S6 class Lyndon Longhorn in the S4 classification 
And of course, these swims will be converted into points totals. With the thousand points being the, the world's best time in the last two years for the swimmers particular classification. So here comes Zach Washington Young. Let's see what kind of time he can get. 113.34 was his best this year. 113.64. Well done, Zach. Be watched at home by his partner and his young son, Chance. I said I'd give him a shout out when I spoke to Grant, to uh, Zach the other day. And Lyndon Longhorn, Great Britain, uh, British record holder in that time of 133.30. And it's 136.82 for Lyndon Longhorn. He was a Paralympian in Tokyo. Linden swam in the, the trials here in 2012, but there's Zach. He's uh, been a fixture at the, the World Para Series over the, the last couple of years. Still keeping improvement. Zach Washington Young now based down here in London, along with Will Perry and Alice Ty. Right on his personal best time there as we go into the, the second heat. Top eight points earners will make their way to the final. There's a few swimmers not eligible for the, the final, though. No, some swimmers not, don't have an international classification. There's uh, one non-British national as well who's going to be taking part in heat number four. There's Sam Downey. He's not been on the best of form this week, Sam Downey. Uh, the World Championship bronze medalist in backstroke, East Lothian swimmer. He will go in lane number two. Watch out for Bruce D right at the top. Take British record, long-standing British record held by Sasha Kindred is 109.83. And Bruce D at the World Para Series in Aberdeen a couple of months ago went 110.24, so just 0.4 of a second. Outside the qualification, uh, the British record, I should say. Qualification. A little bit steeper in 105.56, but great start there in the centre of the pool. That's Ryan Potter, the para event seeded the slowest at the top and the fastest at the bottom. So it's a little bit of a surprise to see Ryan Potter go out strongly. He's in the S14 class, remember, with an intellectual impairment. The 100 freestyle, not a Paralympic event for the S14 class, so a number of the S14s will be swimming here for a time in the heat. Really places up for grabs, of course, for the GB team. So important to post a decent time here in the heats for these S14 swimmers. And great swim, 59.58. Lovely to dip under the one minute mark. Let's go back to Bruce D right at the top. Can he challenge 109.83? Oh, 110.24. <laughs> He's equaled his lifetime best there. Bruce D, another 110.24. And with that time, he will earn himself 720 points, and that will be the top points earner. So we should see him back into the final tonight, I think. Two heats to go, though. But I would think he would have another crack at that British record tonight, Bruce D. So 110.24. Remember, it's not always the swimmer who hits the wall first, who has the highest points total. Range of S14s in this one as well. James Clegg, the S12 swimmer, he goes in lane six. There's Cameron Vernkoom. He's had a great season so far, Cameron. Going in lane two. Matthew Redfern from Worcester, visually impaired swimmer. There's James Clegg, a medalist here in the 2012 Paralympics. He's retired for a number of years. Take Made a few short-lived comebacks, but he has <laughs> his sights set on Paris. He's the brother of Stephen Clegg, who we saw yesterday. Matthew Redfern and James Clegg could be going head-to-head -head here to see it for a place in the, the GB relay team. So we'll watch with interest to see how they go on. Two visually impaired swimmers. Right at the bottom, Kieran Williams also might have his uh, sight set on a, a possible relay spot for the physical impairment relay. A number of relays are contested at the Paralympic Games. There's a 
the intellectually impaired relay, visually impaired relay, and a couple of uh, physical impairments as well. But Redfern going well in the early stages here. Looks like he has a little bit of a lead over Clegg. That might be important. Coming through at the bottom, Kieran Williams, but it looks like it might be Redfern into the wall. 740 points for Redfern. And 55.99, great swim from Redfern. That is a big improvement on his time. 57.59 is entry time, he's come 55.99. There's James Clegg. Clegg with a 57.42. Another great time from James Clegg, the man who seems to have been in and out of the water a number of times over the last decade or so. He has the highest points total, the two visually impaired swimmers lead the way but that was an impressive time for Mackie Redfern 55.99 you won't be able to see the scoreboard but I'm sure they will know as soon as they get out of the water they will be told their results there's a lineup for the final event this morning final scheduled event I should say of course we have got the re-swim we saw earlier not 50 freestyle for women. <whistles> Harry Stewart from Plymouth Leander, number of S14s. And there's Felipe Rodriguez. Take your Brazilian, marks. eight times a Paralympic medalist right down at the bottom. He's not eligible to make it into the final. He's in between Stephen Clegg and Will Ellard, both of which have achieved nomination times already this week. Only three men have achieved nomination times. It's not a Paralympic event for Will Ellard. But look at this. Wow. It's his birthday today, Will Ellard. What a birthday present this would be. 18 years of age. And he's gone out so fast. 24.12. Absolutely incredible. British record stands at 51.28. Everyone else in a row. But look at Will Ellard. This is incredible swimming here. Oh, fantastic swim from the, the now 18 year old. Let's have a check of the clock. 5176, 5128 was his British record, and 5136 just outside that time. But 995 points for Ellard. He's followed on by Rodriguez, the eight time Paralympic medalist, the Brazilian who swims in the S10 classification. Thank you so much. He earns 812 points, and Stephen Clegg. 54.94 for him in third place. Louis Starby just getting the edge over Louis Lawler there by one one hundredth of a second. Oh my goodness. What a swim for LR though. Big points total. Stephen Clegg in second, of course. Elard, that S14 swimmer, won't be able to make his way into the final. Not a Paralympic event for the S14s. If you leave the way clear for the two Cleggs. Bruce D will be in there. Thomas Navarro Barber, Keir Williams, Rowan Brennan, and Sam Downey will also qualify. Wow, great swim. And Ellard on his 18th birthday. Nice birthday present. Well, I tell you what, uh, a great way to finish off our day there uh, for the heat session. Stephen Clegg um, had a great qualification there for you, made it through to tonight's final back here in London. You medaled in this pool in 2012. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like good to be back. It's given me flashbacks a little bit. Uh, I'm just not in the same shape as I used to be, but that's OK. I took like eight years off swimming and then decided to come back like last year. So still a little bit of catching up to do in my younger self, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that swim. Yeah, uh, you, you know, you're moving that on to tonight's final. You say you took all that time off. You're coming back to, to sort of have a go at Paris. You said to me earlier, I feel like I'm 30, but you were looking strong. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just definitely. I'm feeling it now. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how we go this year. Like, let's keep, are we going to keep training? And age is just a number. It certainly is. I feel you as well. Look, good luck tonight. Uh, well done on that swim. And we'll see what you do later. Thank you very much, guys, uh, for tuning in. It's back over to Andy in commentary, and uh, we'll see you tonight at finals for 6.45. Just before we do leave you, we have one more heat of the women's 50 metres freestyle. It was the heat that actually swam. They completed the race, but there was a really loud noise at the start. And one of the swimmers went in early, did a well, what looked like a false start, but uh, 
Referee declared it null and void. So they're all having a re-swim. Fastest seed is Eva Bacara in four with Harriet Rogers in five. So this is actually heat six of the women's 50 metres freestyle, the re-swim. Eva Ocaro right in the centre in lane four. She's had a much better start here. Well, this is actually going to be benefit Eva Ocaro. This is a, a really good first 25 metres for her right in the centre there. Ocaro leading from Harriet Rogers, maybe just about in second place. It's very, very close indeed. There we go. It looks like Eva Ocaro is going to win it. Her entry time is 25.3. What's she gone? 25.4. So right on that. That should get her through to the final pretty comfortably. 25.44 for the Repton swimmer. And well, her coach Ash Moore is doing a super job. Rep Repton uh, swimming really well here. Thank you so much. So Please confirmation of the result of that. Actually, heat six of the women's 53. Okara wins it 25-4. Little 25-8 from Matt Kelly in second. 8-1. Eight, 8-7 eight, is third. 9-8 is fourth. Golly, it's close, isn't it? So let's see if we've got the uh, finest. Here we go. So Anna Hopkin goes in fastest with Hin uh, Hindley second. Eva Okara in that final heat goes in third with Erin Little in there as well. Clementine Lovell swam really well to qualify. Revit, good burn. Joint sixth. Gosh, it's all happening, isn't it? Well, no doubt about the uh, the fastest seed for that uh, women's 50 metres freestyle final. Anna Hopkin looked absolutely superb. And if she can repeat that swim that she did this morning in the final tonight and win it, she will book her train ticket to Paris. Olympic champion Anna Hopkin on the women's... Well, actually, she won that. Uh, she was part of that mixed medley relay that set the world record. Caleb Dressel shanking her down on that fast, that last 100 metres, the fastest man in the world, 100, 100 metres freestyle, chasing Anna Hopkin, and she beat him. Not too many people at the Olympics could say that they beat Caleb Dressel head-to-head. -head. So here we go. That's, uh, that is the, now the end of this morning's uh, session. We'll see you this evening at 6.45 for what is going to be an absolutely cracking final session. Have a good afternoon. I'll see you at 6.45.